the Miami Hurricanes and the UCLA Bruins from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, home stadium for UCLA. And as the Bruins come into the stadium, they're looking to rebound from the five and six season. But having an opening game against Miami is a little hazardous for a season beginning because these Hurricanes are tough and they do carry their own cloud with them right now. But all that aside, they go marching right along. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. The Miami leadership in athletics has been tormented considerably over the last 15 years by a whole series of social and legal missteps within the department and its ranks. But these Miami Hurricanes win road games at an unprecedented pace. And Bob Greasy, as we start this new season with Miami, they come with a new philosophy and a new coach. Well, it's a new era at the university. Butch Davis now takes over, and it's, uh, it's his first ball game. And he says, I want to keep the emotion. I want to keep the fiery attitude. But I want to lose the intimidation. I want to lose the finger-pointing and the taunting. He is well-liked by these players, and I think he'll get their respect. Miami now lost seven starters off its defense, whereas UCLA returns nine from theirs, but their defense last year wasn't very good. Well, their defense was near the bottom in every category in the Pac-10, whereas Miami's defense was the best defense in the nation. Quarterbacks, two youngsters today stepping up for the first time as the leaders of their team. Well, you're right. Uh, Ryan Collins on the left has waited four years. This is a fifth year. He's a fifth-year senior. It's his chance. The team respects him and wants him to play. Ryan Fiend, on the other hand, only a second start. He's a fourth-year junior. The thing he has to remember is not to try and win it yourself. This morning about 6.30, I woke up with thunder and lightning and a rainstorm. You get the feeling that the Florida folks brought their own weather. Right now it's about 95 degrees and it will grow more comfortable as the evening wears on. Still out bright and hot as Greg Andrasek puts it on the tee to kick off for the UCLA Bruins. Going deep to receive for Miami. Number 22 is Tony Gator. Number three is Tremaine Mack. And while this is the first game for Butch Davis as head coach, it is the 20th season for Terry Donahue of UCLA. The kick carries to the corner. He almost stepped out of bounds, but Tony Gator gets turned around, comes back to about the 14, and he is planted there. So Miami will go to work with Ryan Collins at quarterback. Collins has had considerable time on the field, as you can see by his numbers, but the most bothersome number of all is that one in yellow. 15 interceptions, 18 touchdowns. He had six starts back in 1993. He is a senior. He comes from Pembroke Pines in Florida. And so Miami comes up in a two-back set. You're going to see one back. You'll see all sorts of things from both teams before the night is over. The ball is handed to Danielle Ferguson. And the blue line collapses on him, led by Abdul McCullough. And the gain is up to about the 17. Now the Chili's starting lineup. The backs and receivers for Miami. Ferguson is number one at tailback. Kevin Brinkworth starting at fullback. But as I said, you'll see some one back from both teams. Key guy here is Jamie German now. German number seven. He is a speedster. He is the big play man of the Miami offense. Second down and eight. Collins first pass. Runs away from pressure. And they get him at the 20 yard line. Again, it is Abdul McCullough on the tackle for UCLA. The offensive front for Miami. There's been some rebuilding there. The key man is the man in the middle. K.C. Jones out of Midland, Texas. 6'2", 265, a junior and a very good center. Amen, brother. Uh, Terry Donahue said he has been great in the films they've seen. So K.C. hunkers down and it's third down and six for the Kane. Short of the first down as the Bruins get Ferguson at the 25. Again, it's Abdul McCullough. Now McCullough's only 202 pounds and six feet tall. 
He had played in the defensive secondary previously, but they wanted him up front where they could utilize his quickness and his toughness, and he just gave you three tackles uh, he, in a row. Uh, Bobby Field, the defensive coordinator, says he plays a lot bigger than he is, and played linebacker, he's going to have to. Mike Chrissy, very good punter for Miami. Career averages uh, better than uh, just under 39 yards per punt. Kick is out. Paul Gidry waits for it, calls for a fair catch at the UCLA 36-yard line. And so the Bruins get pretty good field position for their opening possession. We're at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. That was a 39-yard punt, and we'll see the Bruin offense in a moment. The quarterback for UCLA, he has had one start prior to today. Ryan Fien from Simi Valley, California. You see his numbers from his career so far. He's a junior. 6'3", 211, and they drop back into a two-back set. Three wideouts of the ball game, but they run it, and they'll be running it until Miami stops it. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar carried the ball, and Tony Coley put the hit on him. Chile's backs and receivers and starting lineup for UCLA. Kevin Jordan would be considered, I think, the big play man for UCLA. I know it's unusual that you find two wide receivers being highlighted by the two teams, but Jordan, they deserve it. Jordan caught 73 balls last year. It is second down and nine on the second play, and they continue to get the ball to Abdul-Jabbar, and he's up across the 45 and close to a first down. The offensive line is one of the basic strengths of this UCLA football team. It's seasoned, it's big, it's a veteran group. Jonathan Ogden uh, playing that left tackle position is like trying to climb over a wall to get to the quarterback. And as you see, five returning starters and that last play was run just behind Jonathan Ogden. Picked up a first down. There's the big guy. Six foot eight, 303 pounds. It's a long yard on third down. There's contact. Defensive man jumped into the neutral zone, did not retreat. And now I would say this call could go either way. Dead ball. Dead ball. Offside. Yep. On the defense. First down. James Fogeltanz is the referee making the definitive call, and it's a first down for the UCLA Bruins. Butch Davis, having Miami. been at First Miami down, under on Jimmy Johnson's staff, went with Jimmy to the Dallas Cowboys where he was defensive coordinator. But when the call came to consider the job at Miami, he took it because he'd been there and he knew the territory. And everybody so far seems to be very, very happy about it. In the middle goes Abdul-Jabbar. Hit at the line of scrimmage, shook him off, and moved it on down close to five yards on the carry. Defensively for Miami now, and uh, they will change this defense a lot too, I suspect, and probably more as the year goes on. Primary strength up front would be with the defensive ends, Kennard Lang and Kenny Long. They led the team in sacks last year. Linebackers are very good. James Burgess suspended for two games, not here. Ray Lewis is the bell cow there. Carlos Jones is the leader of that defensive secondary, and at three, the other three people all moved to different positions this year. Here's Ryan Fien rolling out, sidearms his pass, caught first down, 31-yard line. Kevin Jordan made the catch. And a nice call, uh, Keith, by Bobby Toledo, the offensive coordinator. They go three wide receivers and one back. They're changing their personnel. Jordan's going to go down. He's got Carlos Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Fien, the quarterback, is and outside the pocket. Game has plenty of time to throw it and good vision and on the run throws it a little low but still a good completion. Bob Toledo the offensive coordinator for the UCLA team 31 yard line first down for the Bruins mounting a bit of a threat right here the whistle stops the action. Penalty markers on the field. Dead ball. Dead ball. All star on the offense. Down remains one. Five yard penalty. 
Bruins pick up a five-yard penalty for moving. Keith, uh, if you're looking for some stories for the game today for Miami, of course, Ryan Collins on the offense has to be the catalyst. Defensively, they've got to stop UCLA running and make Fiend beat them. UCLA, the offensive line's got to take the pressure off of Fiend, and they got to improve that defense that was one of the worst in the, in the conference last year. Fiend back. Throws a swing pass behind Abdul Jabbar. Makes a good catch. Makes a good run. Picks up about four yards. He got away from Tony Coley, but then there was a, a rat a tat tat as the rest of the Hurricanes defense <laughs> that, got there. Which means poor tackling uh, at the start and then some good hits, but a little slip screen. I like the, the, the start of the drive for UCLA. Some safe passes. You get Ryan Fien out of the pocket. You let him throw the ball. Didn't have to read anything. Just get out there and use your athleticism. Then a little slip screen. Throw the ball to uh, Abdul Jabbar on, a, uh, on a, a nice safe completion. It is second down and 11. Fien comes this way. Has a man. Throws it to him. And taken down at the 26-yard line is Eric Scott. Now, a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, as we look at the UCLA Bruins, we have to consider that they're playing for respect. And one of the things people don't realize as they come into this game ranked number 15 in the nation is that they had a 5-6 and six record, and they had a number of injuries over the years that have really held this team back. They believe if they're healthy and can stay healthy, they can be a contender. Now, take note of Kevin Jordan. He had knee surgery in February. He still hasn't played up to his capabilities yet in practice. Keep. All right, 20. The ball now rests at the 26-yard line, where it is third down and about five. Lean back. Got to hold up the middle. He's got his first down. And he's all the way to the 11-yard line before Eugene Ridley, the free safety, brings him down. And so Ryan Fien shows his courage and just pulled it down and took off when he saw all that grass in front of him. Well, from behind the offense, the offensive line, he's got plenty of time, creates a huge hole in front of him. The defensive tackles are not there that Miami had last year. Warren Sapp and Pat Riley went one and two in the NFL draft, and that is a big weakness for the Hurricanes, those two defensive tackles. And UCLA will run the ball until Miami makes them stop. Like this, to Abdul Jabbar. That's a good tackle by number 52, Ray Lewis, the 230 pound junior out of Lakeland, Florida. I'll tell you something else that happened for Terry Donahue in the offseason. Normally, he leaves, loses a bunch of coaches, but he got two back. He got Don Riley back to coach his offensive line, which Don Riley was the offensive line coach during those glory years when they were winning the conference championship. And he got Larry Marmee back to coach his defensive backs. Yeah. Those are two good football coaches. Abdul Jabbar takes it up the middle. Miami getting a little stiffer now as uh, they're getting the feel of things. And where the Bruins might like to want to go with uh, Abdul Jabbar. And they'll be looking now at third down, the ball at the seven yard line. You mentioned that Kareem Abdul Jabbar was uh, known as Sharman Shaw last year. No, I have not. Well, he, he was number two in the back <laughs> handed rushing. If you just turned in and don't know who uh, Abdul Jabbar is, right there, it was Sharman Shaw and uh, gained over uh, 1,200 yards last year on the ground. Terry Donahue says if he runs 1,400 yards again this year, he'll call him Sir Him. <laughs> he'll refer to him in whatever manner he prefers. Timeout called. UCLA knocking on the door, but it's third down. They want to talk. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement. Red Dog Beer, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You're your own dog. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. And State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, it's third down. The ball is at the seven-yard line for UCLA. They can get a first down, but I think right now they're thinking in zone more than anything else. The seven -yard line. Miami will send up one, two, three, four, five. They got six people who can see the ball. Back it goes out of the shotgun to Fiend. His pass is 
caught short of the five-yard line. Pick up is about one yard, and they'll be looking at fourth down. Kevin Jordan had no chance because he was covered immediately. The Miami defense is just so quick, Keith, that even if you throw a quick pass to your top fourth receiver, down. they were on him in a second, and he had no chance to run. Bjorn Merton comes into the ball game, the place kicker for UCLA. He was one of the best in the country Walker as a freshman and a terrible Merton. slump as a sophomore. Went down 12 for 21 last year, but he's been doing very well in the fall practice. So Merton out of Centerville, Virginia, will try a 24-yard field goal. Snap is high, but the placement is good, and the kick is good. And so UCLA, in its first possession, Gets the first point to the ball game at six minutes to play in the first quarter, lead three to nothing. Next Saturday, it's a college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Noon Eastern viewers in most of the country will see one of these three games. And then at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame go into West Lafayette against Purdue. And then at four, Pacific, on the West Coast only, UCLA will be playing BYU. So check your local listing for the game in your area. Call your local cable operator for the games available on pay-per-view next Saturday here on ABC Sports. And in case you didn't hear, Northwestern beat Notre Dame today. And so the Irish are going into West Lafayette against the a bunch of Boilermakers that would love to do the same thing to them. They beat West Virginia today. Well, yeah, how many points do you think? And Morgan on the road. How many points do you think Purdue would be favored in that one? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> 20, 21, 22. Yeah. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> Lord of mercy. I don't know. Uh, you Jim Coletto, though, has done a great job at Purdue. He's been there five years, and he's uh, turned that program around. The other game that really started me today was the way Air Force handled BYU. Yes. Uh, really handled it. Bruins go 57 yards in 12 plays. There's a penalty flag on the field as they kick it off to Tony Gator. And Gator is whacked down at the 15-yard line. It's a bad choice by Tony Gator. He was five yards in the end zone and tried to bring it out and did not get back to the 20-yard line. Larry Atkins on the stop for the Bruins. I think we may get a re-kick here because the Bruins may very, yes, they did. They were, they fouled on the kickoff. Encroachment on the kicking team. Be a five-yard penalty. The defensive line for UCLA, led by Philip Ward, uh, they've gone from a 3-4 to a 4-3 because they didn't have a dominating nose guard, and so they're trying to go to the 4-3 to use some of the quickness they have. But there will be moments, I suppose, today when they get into a nickel and dime package where they'll go back to a 3-4. Yeah. The linebackers are led by Donnie Edwards. Now, you will see number 23 at times today in a down position as a rush in. Yeah, and Abdul McCullough is, uh, is an awful good player, as you mentioned earlier. And the defensive secondary is led by Teddy Lawrence, number two. He's a good one. And uh, he's a lot like this Carlos Jones from Miami. He, he always takes the tough customer and uh, normally does pretty well with him. All right, Anderson will kick it again with Gator and Mac back for Miami. Three to nothing, UCLA at 5:56 to go in the first quarter. Ball put back on the 30-yard line for Anderson. He's going to left foot it down the road. Gets a lot of air under it. Drives that all the way back to the one-yard line nice for kick. Gator. Yep. And Gator gets a little more out of this return up to the 23-yard line. A nice kick. He's kicking it into the corner, which really narrows the return uh, area for the University of Miami. And they gained about uh, five or six yards on that uh, re-kick. So let's see if Miami comes out with any offensive changes for this possession. Ryan Collins is the quarterback. Number one is in there, and he goes into a single back set this time. Got a slot and a wide man at the top of the picture and a wide man at the bottom. That's a German up there at the top. Long-legged flyer. 
Hand it to Ferguson. Blocking's good on the corner, and he dances outside for a good run up to the 39-yard line and a first down. Danielle Ferguson making his first start as oh, a Hurricane. Also, uh, Keith, uh, he played in a backup role last year, and uh, Hurricane's got a lot of good running backs on this uh, ball club. Uh, didn't Ferguson come out of Southbridge? Out of uh, Columbus, uh, Columbus High School. Columbus yeah. High School. Yeah. He played with Brian, did Yes, he did. Son. Interesting uh, story about those two. First down, the ball just short of the 40-yard line. This time, Ferguson is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Number 77, Brady Stretch, takes him down. And at that alignment, he was a nose guard. Now let's spend a moment with John Saunders. How you doing, John? Keith, college football started up doing very well, but two teams out of the top 25 not doing quite as well. They've already lost to unranked teams today, and Vandy trying to do the same to Alabama. It was 7-0. Brian Bergdorf, though, runs it in and ties the game up. That's where it stands at 7 apiece. Auburn, meanwhile, is leading Ole Miss 20-10. to Back to you. Thank you, John. Here we go with a pass to the sideline. Bruin coverage is too late getting there. It's caught by German. Jamie German is 183 pounds, six-footer, and he can motor if you give him a little room. Paul Guidry was giving him a cushion and couldn't get there in time to get under the ball. So that's going to be a pickup of about seven yards. The Hurricanes do have some receivers, Keith, with some speed. They graduated a couple receivers, but it seems like the Hurricanes always have some other speed guys to fill in, and German has that speed. Here they come. Throws underneath it. May have checked off when he saw him piling up for the blitz. And he goes right down the middle to Chris C. Jones. And the pass is good for a first down at the UCLA 42-yard line. Here's the fake of the linebackers right here. But as they pull out, watch over here as the... Uh, Jones is just going to sneak right over the center. Collins gets back, lets everything clear out. Nice timing, nice distribution of the receivers on that one. Ferguson carries the ball on first down and picks up four yards, moving it inside the 38 with three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. And UCLA, which has had one possession, leading in the ball game three to nothing. New terminology, Keith. All the offensive is new terminology. It's even a new huddle. You guys had to learn up where, line, new, where to line up in the spring. Pass. Again, that's the second time that pattern has been used and the second time that it's worked. Ball thrown to German right in front of Teddy Lawrence. Jamie German. Oh, it's Gidry on that side for this play on the boundary side. Tomorrow night here on ABC, you are the stars of America's funniest home videos, and then Dean Kane and Terry Hatcher are the stars of Lewis and Clark. And then Virginia Madsen starring in a story of real light, fatal attraction, a murderous affair, the Carolyn Warma story, all tomorrow night on ABC. Ferguson going outside, slips and falls down at the 30-yard line. So on first down, there is no gain. Rose Bowl turf, very good. Yes, it is. Ferguson just trying to do too much, trying to cut back. Uh, I mentioned the huddle, Keith. Uh, in the huddle, sometimes you want your quarterback where you can see everything that you need to see. And that is behind the huddle, looking at the defense. In case they substitute anybody, you can see if they're substituting. And that's very simple, but sometimes quarterbacks aren't put there. Collins getting pressure, gets his pass away, and it is off the hands and incomplete yeah, of wide. Yatil Green. Wide open, too. Yep. He was a gimme, and he missed him. Yatil Green in head of position. Collins just threw it a little bit too quick. He would have just held it a split second. I'm sure the butterflies are still going in there. He's smiling. He knew he had his man open. Both quarterbacks, though, uh, starting out pretty well. That's Collins' first miss. He's now three out of four for 27 yards. Fien 
in UCLA's first possession was four for four and yeah. 25 yards. And, and, the, and the opposite is true there big time is that they haven't turned it over, haven't right. made a big mistake. Right. Time out. Time out. Miami stopping your clock at two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. The Rose Bowl and the Bruins lead three to nothing. Down and ten for Miami. The ball at the UCLA 30. Kevin Brinkworth, Hurricanes fullback, hobbled off the field, bunged up some. Derek Harris is now in there, number 34. The plan was to alternate him anyway. Brinkworth seemed to be banged up a little bit. Harris has played a little bit of everything. Linebacker tied in and fullback before. Collins passes away, and it is just over the hands of Jamie Truman. Pass is incomplete. Jamie Truman, the intended receiver. Going to bring up fourth down and 10 at the 30. Well, they had single coverage in the secondary because they had a blitz on. The Hurricanes picked it up. Gives it a lot of loft, giving the receiver time to separate from Teddy Lawrence, but German just couldn't get to it. Mike Chrissy will hold, and Dane Pruitt will try a 47-yard field goal. He has hit 13 in a row. Not from this distance, Mike. But he's got a... He runs out of air, and it's good. Hooked it left. So... He misses from 47 yards. The Canes in their second possession are turned away at 219 to play in the first quarter. First down from the 30. UCLA goes back to the familiar tune. Run the ball till they make us quit. Kareem Abdul Jabbar, 200 pound junior, hauls it around the right side and got three yards. Skip Hicks was to be the other part of the UCLA offense, the other tailback. Bigger, stronger fellow, but he tore up a knee in shorts at the very outset of fall practice. He's had trouble with injuries uh, most of his career, Hicks, hadn't he? Yep. So you got the slasher in there, and he was the hammer, and they lost him. Second down and seven. Bean goes down quickly. Number 93, Marvin Davis, just slammed him to the ground as uh, he was in Bean's face before he really had a chance. And here's 20. Keith, bad news for number 41, Kevin Brinkworth, the fullback. The trainer came over to me and said, after examining him, that it's a partially torn Achilles tendon. Uh, it's his right foot, and they're working on him right now, but obviously he will not be back in this ball game. Keith? Or next week either. It's a tough break. Uh, Brinkworth, a fifth-year senior, came over from linebacker to fill that fullback spot. The Hurricanes had no fullbacks when they went to the two-back system. Bean rolls out, gets his pass away, incomplete to the sidelines, and takes the lick. He was getting all kinds of pressure, but the man that put him on the ground was Ray Lewis, who ran him down. If you want to see a middle linebacker right here, Ray Lewis from Miami, he just goes after him. Led the team in tackles last year. All Big East player. Chris Saylor is in now to punt for UCLA. He's a freshman. Also a very good place kicker. Is at all kinds of marks around the San Fernando Valley in place kicking. Tony Gator is deep, showing respect for his leg. He's well back. And it's a good kick. Fair catch at the 32-yard line. A 41-yard punt with no return at 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Miami defense showing a little more aggressiveness in that last series. Putting more pressure on Veen. Collins out now. As Miami gets a fairly good starting point for this possession, their own 32. Ferguson and Harris will be in the backfield. Showing a 4-3 alignment defensively. And Collins back with no pressure. The pass is incomplete. Off the hands of the intended receiver, Gerard Deafness. Collins put a little heat on it. But just didn't reel it in. No, he just didn't catch it. Uh, Collins went to the right man, had the good speed on the ball. Deafness just didn't pull it in. Uh, tight ends, I guess, around Miami aren't used to being thrown all the balls. He only caught nine passes last year. 
You just saw the Grambling score. They're leading comfortably. One of the wonderful people of my life is about to close within two games of 400 wins. Eddie Robinson, 76 years of age. Danielle Ferguson gets away. They're going to call him down. Going to call him down back inside the 30-yard line. I thought he was down on one knee, but he was wiggling all the time, squirted loose, and almost had a big play. You mentioned that Danielle went to Columbus High School with Brian, my son. About five years ago, they're playing a junior varsity game, and you know, at those games, you can go right down to the sideline. Danielle's mom is a, is a police officer. She's there in full dress blue. They run a sweep around the bench. Danielle breaks a couple of tackles, and he takes off for the goal line, and his mom is running right alongside him <laughs> on the outside, and she's the closest person to him, 65 yards and a touchdown, and, and they're celebrating together in the end zone. Now I know where he got his feet. 3 nothing UCLA. Back with more between Miami and UCLA after this word from our ABC station. Play at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, with the UCLA Bruins leading Miami three to nothing. They're playing on real grass, and the sun is slowly settling down. The moon rising in the vicinity of the San Gabriels, and it's been another hot day. It's been hot for two weeks. Now. We had thunderstorms this morning. They have some more tonight. As a uh, Blood watch up in the high desert country. Third down and 13 now for Miami as Cummins is chased out of the pocket, throws a wounded goose. And uh, oh my goodness, he's lucky to get that ball back. That'll go as an incomplete forward pass. He was trying to get it off to Derek Harris. Somebody had him by the shirt tail, and uh, he just threw that thing up in the air. Well, from behind the UCLA, from the uh, Miami. UCLA was up there faking blitz. Well, Miami was a little bit confused, so the pass protection was a little mixed up. Mike Very dangerous to try to make something out of nothing. That's the competitive spirit of Collins, but you got to know when to take it and just go down with it. Mike Chrissy to punt. Kick is away. First of them was 39 yards. A fair catch is called, and they called it rather late in the scheme of things. Paul Gidry, though, gets away with it, handles it cleanly, a 39-yard punt. There's a look at the numbers after the first quarter. Everything is about the same. The rushing yards, passing yards, total yardage is about the same. UCLA had one drive of uh, 12 plays, their first drive, when they got their field goal. But other than that, quarterbacks, uh, no turnovers yet uh, for either quarterback. Not a, not, an, not a great start, but a safe start for both quarterbacks. It's Fien at quarterback, Abdul-Jabbar tailback, and Jarvis Watson, a freshman, is the fullback. All freshmen, all three fullbacks are freshmen. That pass is winged out to the sidelines, and uh, again, the quarterback is lucky to get it back yes. because Carlos Jones had his hands on that baby. The pass intended for Kevin Jordan. Jones Carlos makes Jones, the catch. On the it's a see you later. Uh, Carlos Jones and Fien is talking to uh, Jordan about the timing. Jones picked off five last year and took one of them back for a touchdown. Carlos Jones gets it in his hands. You won't catch him. Yeah. He's not, got a second Not gear. down that sideline. You won't. All you're going to have chasing him is offensive lineman. That's the way. 285 pounds. The quarterbacks combined started out seven for seven. This is Abdul Jabbar. Good run. Good uh, effort after the tackle gets him another couple of yards. But they started off 7-7, and since that time, they're 0 for 6. Big block came from Jonathan Ogden. Watch him up there at the top, number 79. 79, he's the big one. 62 is Christensen with him, but look at the two nice blocks that the left tackle Ogden and Christensen right next to him. We talked about the strength being that offensive line. you got to play to it. Third down and two now for the Bruins. I want to play he gives it to Abdul Jabbar, and behind that offensive line, there's just an absurd appears as the linesman marks it. Some of the baseball scores on the day's action. California is really wobbling right now. They had an 11 and a half, 12 game lead at one point. Hung around 10 game lead for a long time, but now they are really struggling. 
It's a long season. I guess over the long pull, everything balances out. First down for UCLA. Ball at the 43-yard line. Feed under pressure. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for the tight end, Brian Richards. And he's hurt. It's like he might be bleeding. Kennard Lang, the man is going to 96, deck yes. The quickness of the defensive ends right there. Oh, that's 260 pounds yeah. landing on you. Right in his face. And uh, he's got to come out of the ballgame. Yeah, he's bleeding. Yep. Not, not badly, but uh, some, some light blood on his face. We were told about this young man. It's a true freshman, Cade McNown. He's 6'1", 206 pounds. He's from West Lynn, Oregon, but he was born and raised in California. He played one year of high school football in Oregon. And he's at a very good fall camp. He worked his way right into the number two backup position. So Cade McNown, M-C-N-O-W-N, remember the name. Gives the ball to Abdul Jabbar, the left side of the line. Gives him some Abdul Jabbar. Room, six yards worth at least. Oh, I'll tell you, that Christensen and Ogden and Flanagan yes. are moving things and, over there, aren't they? And against a good, a good defense. There's a look at. Um, yeah, that's yeah. See, he's got the cut chin now. Yeah. I was looking at you the other day, though. I still haven't found the cut on your chin. I got one on my chin. Yeah. <laughs> I can remember that, that same spot. That's one of those. Uh, uh, War scores, scars right there. He's all right, Grandma. It's that's your yeah. quarterbacks are supposed to have that. Yep. It means they're involved. <laughs> they don't want to get that involved. <laughs> the left-hander McDown gets his pass away. The pass is complete. Pass is complete. And you first can move the chain. UCLA first down as Brian Richards, the tight end, suddenly gets involved with the ball game. Ray Lewis. Middle linebacker, it's a tight end delay. It's a nice call, a first pass of the collegiate career of this McNown, the true freshman. Just an easy pass, and uh, that man right there is a three-year starter. He started as a true freshman at the University of Miami. Just at the 41-yard line. All is handed off inside, and it's Abdul Jabbar carrying again. He's going to get a lot of carries. He'll get 25 in this ball game, I suspect. He's already got 10 carries for 43 yards. 12-10 to play in the first half. 3-0 Bruins lead. There's a Miami defense. Uh, this is what they did last year, Keith. In the nation, they were first in scoring, total law defense, and pass defense, and seventh in the nation in rushing. They only gave up 97 yards a game last year. Seven starters, though, not on the field here today. The blitz was coming, and Abdul Jabbar got hammered by Ray Lewis. And let us go now to John Saunders. Well, Keith, as you know, a lot of changes on the Colorado offense, including the loss of Cordell Stewart. He's moved on. Coy Detmer, though, his replacement. Nice job there on the pass to Ray Carruth. 17 yards, and the Buffs have a 10 to nothing lead on the road. Right now, let's take it back to you, Keith. I'll tell you, it's amazing. You look at Detmer, and you don't think he's that strong, but he can burn your fingers yep. at 30 yards. Yep. He's strong. Back now, now, gets the heat, gets the pass away. He took a lick. They plant him, but he completed his pass, and he gets up. He was hit again by uh, number 96, Kennard Lang. But so he's... Kennard, here's the play before. This is Ray Lewis on a blitz. Now he runs past the line. He gives up on the quarterback, finds the ball very quickly, says it's going to be a running play. And here is the quarterback, McNown, getting hit by Lang, number 96. The Hurricanes are laying out some walks. Now this pass was completed to Milder, but it is uh, short of the first down, obviously, and it brings up fourth and seven. And here's Chris Saylor in for a field goal try. No, he's going to punt it. He's going to punt it. I keep, every time I see him, I think in terms of field goal, and every time I see his name, I think field goal, but he hit that one right up the silo, and it takes a UCLA bounce, and it rolls all the way down to the four-yard line. They hit about the 30 and then rolled inside the 10. Yeah. So it's Miami's ball. Just
just inside the five. We'll be back after this word from our ABC station. Ball just inside the five yard line. Ten minutes and 16 seconds to go in the first half. UCLA making that field goal stand up so far for a three nothing lead. Miami moved the ball pretty well the last time they had a go at it. And Ray Lewis has sort of taken over between he and Kennard Lang. They're just sort of taking <laughs> over the defensive chores well, for the Hurricanes. Well, they are the senior members of that defense that is left over from last year. And uh, they're kind of showing, the, showing how it's supposed to be done. Casey Jones snaps the ball. Ryan Collins turns and gives it to Danielle Ferguson. And the 210-pound junior will move it out close to the 10. Here's Lynn Swan. Keith Ryan Fien has a lacerated chin, so what they did was they put a hard cup chin strap over it, bandaged it up, and they think what they'll have to do at halftime is put in a couple of sutures. It'll be interesting to note that while he was standing here just a moment ago, they were suturing up his jersey also because they ripped a hole in it. But he will go back into the ball game in this half, Keith. They wouldn't they wouldn't suture up a wide receiver uniform, would they, uh, <laughs> Lynn? No, they wouldn't. It would just continue to get torn and ripped. <laughs> Second down and six. This is Ferguson finding a first down up near the 20 yard line. So some good hard running by Daniel. You look around at the Miami offense and you find a few Texans. A fellow from Missouri, one from Montreal and Michigan occasionally, but the bulk of them come from Florida. Yeah, 44, I think, uh, out, out of the 85 uh, on the uh, scholarship roster are from, but no other state has more than, than five or six uh, players from, uh, from that area. It's a first down for the Canes at their own 19-yard line, and this is Ferguson again, and this time he paid his dues as he turned up field. He really took a lick from the Bruin defense. You know, Keith, uh, you mentioned the, the temperature and the shades coming over the field now. It's going to help the players, but uh, second down and it's still seven. awfully hot out there, and you're going to see a lot of substituting uh, going on, or the fourth quarter is going to be a, be a vital uh, quarter in the outcome of this ballgame. Ferguson way back there where he has some time to search and that time he was looking for a hole that closed. The door slammed on him and it's led by Grady Stretch, number 77. Monday night, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football as the Dallas Cowboys take on the New York Giants, plus Jeff Fahey starring as the Marshal. That's Monday starting this week on ABC. Check the local listings in your area. Put the ball at the 21 and call it third down and seven. And time out. That's the second one for Miami, so they've got one left with 7.56 to play in the first half. It'll be third and seven as the Canes come to the ball, trailing in the ball game by a three-nothing score. Carlos Joseph is in the backfield with Ferguson behind Ryan Collins. This figures pass here. Gets it away. He's going back. He's got a man, and the ball is slapped loose. Good play by number three defensively for UCLA, Javelin Guidry. Yatil Green was out there, had the ball in his arms, and Guidry slapped it away. I, I think. It, it may have just gone through his arms, but Collins throws this ball as well as you can throw it and gets hit at 497. I think that ball went through his arms. Javelin was a little late, it looked, Keith. They were late. And Yatil Green just let it go through his arms. So failing the first down, in comes Mike Chrissy for his third punt of the night. The first two were each 39 yards in length. This is a little higher. Again, a fair catch is called by the Bruins. Paul Gidry drifting back 42 yards on that punt, and UCLA will go to work at their own 37-yard line. So again, the Bruins have good field position. And as far as uh, the storyline uh, for today, uh, talked about Ryan Collins. He is uh, three of eight with 27 yards, and he's converted on one of five third down uh, opportunities. So uh, a slow start for both offenses here today. 
And coming out at quarterback, it is Ryan Feed. Patched up now. Ryan Feed is on his chin, and he's back in the ball game. And James Milner lines up behind him as a single back. Milner was a fullback last year. Feed back throwing the ball. Going down the middle. Has a man open. Missed him. He had him. And he just that plays miss number 85, Jim McElroy. Uh, he is the speed merchant McElroy, the on this Bruin uh, offense. Um, Terry was telling me, Donahue, that uh, he's got outstanding speed, and he was the only guy out. Play action, and he just threw it as far as he could throw it. And um, McElroy just couldn't catch up with it. That's, that's kind of interesting. Ray Lewis, the linebacker, was coming back up the field with three of the DBs, having a little talk with them. Yeah. Well, he's the leader. There's no, there are no seniors on that defense. None. Anywhere on the bench or anywhere else. This is Milner. And uh, James Milner, the senior out of Alexandria, Virginia, picks up a first down for UCLA. And we've got Jonathan Ogden hoppling. From behind the defense, that's a nice trap box by Sinkson. And then poor tackling by Holmes, number 90. Ogden showing some pain uh, coming up off of a block, but he's going to stay there. I think he's got, he got fallen on, Keith. Yeah, uh, like twisted his leg a bit. Yeah. It's first down. The ball is at the Miami 49-yard line. He's back. Arm hit as he delivered the pass, and it goes incomplete, intended for Milner. Feared Milner, anyway. And again, it's Kennard Lang. It was Lang who uh, put the helmet on his chin and cut it. It was Lang who put McDown flat of his back and deflated him. Well, so Kennard has yeah. declared war <laughs> on the quarterback. <laughs> And the ball was thrown out of bounds, and a good thing because it was a lateral. Well, if you remember, yeah, exactly. If you remember on the uh, lineups, we highlighted the two defensive ends, yep. and Kennard Lang was one of them. He was the Big East Rookie of the Year last year, had eight sacks for the Hurricanes, and uh, he is just eating up uh, Chad Overhauser on that one. That ball thrown out of bounds, it's a minus seven yards on the play, so the Bruins are going to be looking at second down and 17 because the ball was behind the line of scrimmage and was thrown out of bounds. Kenny Holmes and Kennard Lang on the outside, and Ray Lewis in the middle doing the damage. Pressure coming, passes away. Pass is good, got a block in front of the ball carrier down to the 40-yard line for Kevin Jordan. Jordan, who's been slow to come about, he's been dinged up and had some surgery and all of that sort of stuff, but he looks to be gaining confidence now as he's enduring the hits. Wide receiver screen, watch the offensive line go downfield, and then the ball will be thrown to the wide receiver behind the line. Watch the lineman. See the lineman, the five blue shirts? You can't do that in pro football. The ball has to be thrown behind the line of scrimmage, and in college football, you can go down and block... If, if the ball is thrown behind, that is a legal play, and it is it is dangerous. And it's third and one now for the Bruins after the big play. Yeah. There yeah. goes Milner. And the former fullback blows his way inside the 35 to the 34, and a Bruin first down. I think uh, James was surprised that he popped through the line and got that free. He stood up. They got a hold of him. Uh, just good blocking up front. Uh, we talked about the strength of UCLA. Ogden is one of them. Flanagan, 58. Christensen Sinkson is 73. And Overhauser is 69. And they're all returning starters. They're right to left at 300, 308, 278, 280, and 305 pounds. They're big. Bean quickly outside to about the 25. A little quick pop play to Derek Ayers, who made that catch, a junior out of Compton, California. Well, tomorrow, the big boys on the PGA Tour will have at it in the final round of the Greater Milwaukee Open, presented by Mike Beer. Leader after three rounds, Scott Oak. Live coverage begins for Eastern 3 Central and Pacific here on ABC Sports. There have been six different UCLA receivers so far. Here goes Milner around left end, and he's going to pick up a first down for the Bruins to the 20-yard line. And so they're riding the D 
big old news right now. The first down, UCLA. Milner has uh, carried three times, gained 14 for 7 and 5, respectively, on those three carries. So first down at the Miami 20 with five minutes to play in the first half. UCLA leading three to nothing. Bean still got it. Pressure comes. By oh, Dillon. Okay. Number just, 90, Kenny Holmes. Yeah, you, just, you just can't take very much time when you throw it. Now let's check in with John again. Keith, thanks a lot. Wisconsin facing Colorado. Daryl Bevel, terrific quarterback. Looks to pass and then decides just to run this one right in. 10 to 7 at that point. But Colorado is marching again right now inside the 10. It's 10 7. We'll keep you updated. Back to you, Keith. All righty. They're playing that one up in Madison. On the shores of Lake Mendel. Ball is back on the 30 yard line. It'll be second down and 20. And timeout. UCLA will have one timeout remaining at 4.05 to play in the first half. UCLA. As we said at the beginning of the telecast, Terry Donahue starting his 20th season at age 51. Only 31 when J.D. Morgan hired him to coach the football team. He's a walk-on UCLA. Yep, Defense, Notre Dame High School. Defensive lineman. Out of the shotgun on second down and 20. Bean swings it out. And there's no room over there for Milner as number 45. Uh, sort him out. That'll be Twan Russell, linebacker, making the tackle. Look at this one. Youngstown State gets beat by Kent. That is a big upset. Jim Tressel, the, uh, the coach there, had an opportunity to coach the University of Miami. Uh, decided to stay at Youngstown State. I would still say that he is a prime candidate to move up anytime he wants. Yeah, I think Jim is going to have a lot of choices. Any, anytime he wants. He's happy where he is. Yes, that's what I said. And so is his wife, <laughs> which is very important. Bean back, lets it go, and again has to throw underneath the coverage as Abdul Jabbar had come back in at the single back position. And they stop him at the 26. Colorado has scored. John has the story. Keith, we told you Wisconsin had gotten right back in the game, but Colorado just marches down the field. Marlon Barnes, six yards on second down here. 17 to 7 now. The Buffs back in front by 10. Back to you, Keith. Uh, the Buffaloes, Rick Neuheisel, played at UCLA. Bjorn Mertens in for a 43 yard try. He's kicked one. Snap is high, but he gets it away, and it's no good. I don't think the placement was all that good. The snap was high, and it looked like Walker maybe didn't get it down cleanly, and he pulled it off to the left. Well, we'll take a look. Now, timing was off. Score remains three to nothing. New tailback in a ball game now for Miami. Trent Jones, 5'8, 188 pounder, sophomore out of Miami. They hold him in high regard. He brings a fresh pair of legs to the game as Ferguson sits down. He had 40 yards on 11 carries. And Collins back, lets it go, has a man. Pass is complete up at the 35 beyond it to Sai Tucker, tight end, 6'6, six, six, big target. At the conclusion of the game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has, com has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and on the universities. Second down and one. Well, just over the 35, we're at second down and one for the Canes. Not much scoring here. Been kind of quiet. There have been some knots laid on, folks. I'll tell you, there's been some pop. Throw that ball to number 87, Yatil Green, and he makes it a first down Miami up at the 44-yard line. You got a lot of big plays, players, Keith, on both offenses. On you've got running backs, and you've got wide receivers, and you've got a good offensive line. 
The problem is the quarterbacks are not converting on third down to make keep first downs. And these two defenses are very quick and, and are sure tacklers. When they get an opportunity to, to tackle, they're making the play. Quarterbacks have to step up and make the tough, tough plays. Collins back. Wants to go big. Can't do it. Suck him back at the 36. Brady Strett is having a big ball game. Big old senior out of Tim P. Playing in the middle for UCLA. Looking from behind the offense. Take a look at the pass protection. That's Ina and Perry, 73. Casey Jones gets beat by Stretz. When uh, Stretz beats Casey Jones, that's something to tell, talk about. Philip Ward came in to clean him up. And it's second down and 19. And here goes Jones. Trent Jones with those fresh legs slashing his way. And gets back across the 40 to the 47, where it'll be yeah. third down and eight. Not only fresh legs, Keith, and that's a good point, but he is small and quick. Only 5'8", and he just darts through there. A lot of speed on both offenses, but like I said, as the trend seems to be in college football, a lot of speed and quickness on defense also. Third and seven. Here they come. <laughs> Collins now has got to run out of the pocket. And he won't get around the corner. He was finally run, run down by Andrew McCullough. McCullough on the That's stop why he's at a linebacker position. Because he brings a lot of yep. tools to the trade. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders has scores and highlights, and there are some very interesting scores. We'll have a report on Miami's storm of controversy and uh, their ray of hope, and we'll have an ABC News report. Mike Chrissy is in the punt now. It'll be his fourth of the ball game. A pair of 39-yard boots and one 42. Nobody deep for UCLA. That's a very good kick. It's going to get pretty good coverage unless it takes a hot bounce. Nice play. Yes, Keynes cover the ball at the just outside the six, make it the seven-yard line. Is it that Scott that caught the ball? Tony Gator. Gator. Ran it down. Nice. This is by nice far play. UCLA's worst starting point. A 43-yard punt. Up to this no no juncture of the game, the, the Bruins have been starting at an average position of 34-yard line. That's pretty good. Uh, I've been impressed, Keith, with both defenses. And like I said, you know, Nebraska won the national championship. They went with smaller players and quicker. The Hurricanes have always had those types of players on defense. And, and Bobby Field's defense for UCLA, they are the same way, quick. And, and they're just running down the offenses. The quarterbacks need continuity. They need to keep these drives going and make plays. A minute and two seconds remaining in the first half as UCLA takes over at their own seven. Give it a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he finds daylight outside going around the corner. And he immediately gets UCLA out of trouble all the way out to the 31-yard line. Picked up 24. Coming out of the uh, end zone, uh, you're inside five yards. Big run, nice blocking. Ogden on our right side. On the carry. Makes a nice move. It's a 24-yard carry. He's got 60 yards on the afternoon and only 12 carries. 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Same man big hole he just running through people looks like the Miami defense is tiring it does he ran through three or four sets of arms there and makes it a first down up at the near the 45 clock is running 40 seconds got one timeout remaining but they ought to be in a little bit of a hurry up mode here I mean uh, Another run like that or a pass to get you down in the field goal range. Kevin Jordan wide to the bottom of the picture. They'll run it. Uh, this time, Kennard Lang is there to 
do things to it. And, and you just you got to question the confidence that they have in the quarterback at that point, Keith. They're letting the clock run down. You're out to your 45-yard line. I know you started on your own five. But with, with where you are, I think you throw it there. deep a couple of times and take a chance. Nope, they're going to the clubhouse. In the three to nothing the first lead. With the score, UCLA three. So Miami at halftime, UCLA in a low-scoring ball game leads Miami three to nothing. Now let's join John Sonder. The Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. <laughs> Quiet first half. <laughs> yeah. If you like defense, you got to like this one. Ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, no, quarterback starting for the first time. I know uh, Ryan Collins has started for a while, but uh, getting his first chance to play, you're going to get that. You know, he's going to have slow offense. Only scoring was this 24-yard field goal by Bjorn Merton. He missed later from 43 yards. Miami's Pruitt missed from 47 yards. Here is a big play by Kennard Lang as he belts the Bruin quarterback Ryan Fiend, puts him on the ground, and uh, opens up his chin. Lewis kicking off for Miami. Ray Lewis had a big first half for the Canes defense, blitzing here. He's an outstanding football player in every sense of the word, so uh, he's had a big first half. And the Miami defense seemed to get a little mow in the uh, second quarter of play. They got a little momentum going for them. Whereas the UCLA ground game, I thought, moved the ball fairly efficiently. Yes, they did. Bruin will kick off as the Bruins had won the toss at the outset, elected to take it on the second half kickoff. So he'll be kicking it off to Eric Scott and Jim McElroy. McElroy watches it go to the sidelines and go out of bounds. And that's five yards, and they'll bring it back and do it all over again. And we go to Lynn Swan. We've had a chance to talk to Terry Donahue on the way in. He said he was pleased with the way his team was playing. One question he had going into the game, whether or not the Bruins could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Miami, and he felt they were doing just that. He decided he didn't want to press his young team with 40 seconds back up in his own territory because he had a young quarterback, and if his quarterback is playing well, he felt his team would be playing well. When I talked to Butch Davis, he said they've got to do a better job on run defense. He said not just sitting there and catching blocks, but being aggressive and making the play. He says offensively, they've got to make the play on first and ten and get back into this ball game. All right, Swanee, UCLA decides to take it at the 35-yard line under the rule. There will be no free kick re-kick and they'll open with Fiend back at quarterback and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar at tailback so they start out in the second half with a single back offense and Abdul-Jabbar has it and you heard the collision as you ran into Ray Lewis and Kennard Langbo got a piece of him halftime uh, not much for Miami on the left side those numbers are anemic offensively UCLA not a lot better, but look at the rushing yards. 89 yards rushing. Miami last year only gave up 97 in an entire game, so that's what uh, Brooks Davis was saying. we got to slow them down rushing. Time of possession big in favor of UCLA. But the hitting along the trenches, Bob, is midseason form. Oh, it's been outstanding. They are just belting each other. He's got a first down for UCLA at the 48-yard line on the Miami side of the field. And here's UCLA. They scored on their first drive, and then they didn't do anything. They had the ball five possessions. They had two 11-play drives, and, but not a lot. Bean was 8 of 12 and 54 yards. Abdul-Jabbar had 72 yards. Milliner had 25 yards. Jordan uh, had three receptions uh, to lead the receivers, but uh, a lot of rushing yardage for the uh, Bruins. James Milner is in the backfield now, has the ball. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, shakes it off, then somebody grabs him up around the neck, and it's Lang again, and Kennard takes him down. Kennard Lang, 6'4", 260, only a sophomore. He will wear out his welcome in many places before his <laughs> career. As we mentioned earlier, there are no seniors. There's only nine seniors on the team, and there are no senior starters on the defense. In fact, no seniors on the entire defense. That young man, just a sophomore. Still growing. The two ends and the middle linebacker, Ray Lewis, are the meat and potatoes right now of that defense. Second down and eight. 
not much there maybe a yard Ray Lewis number 52 leading the defense and in that particular instance the defense had more surge than the offense yeah, well Lewis read Christensen the left guard pulling the trap and as soon as he read that key he stepped up and made the tackle I mentioned Don Riley coming back to coach the Bruins offensive line and Marmee the secondary but there's another fellow that's on the coaching staff Terry Toomey joined the coaching ranks for the first time. He's a former UCLA nose guard who was all Pac-10 in 85, 86, and 87. He was a heck of a player. And Fiend gets in trouble, gets away, and one man keeps him from breaking a big play. So he almost turned, twisted, and got himself out of there and turned up a big play. Number 93 was the man, Marvin Davis, who took him down. Hurricanes on a little blitz to try and stop the run. And Davis, as you mentioned, was the last line of defense before about 30 yards were taken off. Chris Saylor in for his third punt of the night, 41 and 34 respectively, and Earl Little is back deep for Miami. No pressure. This time Saylor gets a little more air under it, gets it downfield. Uh, it's taken. Stunned. Well, that sudden turn of events. We don't have enough players out there, do they? I don't think no, so. they're one short on the right. Well, they can take the penalty. It won't make much penalty difference. It'll take a five-yard delay of game and then get the man in. Well, you had the 11th man start in right there, and the holder waved him off. You know, I think that's a good move because you don't use your timeout. You've got a good kicker in Merton, so all you lose is five yards. you much rather lose the five yards than a timeout at this point. Sure, absolutely. So they'll just try the extra point from the 15-yard line. McCullough covers it and the Bruins lead 10 to nothing. It's the first time that Earl Little has been back on uh, punt return. Hurricanes had problems with special teams last year. It cost them some wins and it may cost them again this year. A little bit of lightning strikes in the Rose Bowl and UCLA jumps out to a 10 nothing lead now as Greg Andrusik will kick it off. Gator and Mac will wait for it. And the lights are on at the Rose Bowl, starting the second half of play. And it's much cooler with that sundown, huh? Absolutely. I'm so tired of low to mid 90s. I'm ready to go to British Columbia and jump in the river. Oh, look out! This is Gator, and he comes all the way to the 35 yard line before he is finally brought down by the kicker, Greg Andrasek. And you got a hurricane shaking up. It's Gator, hurt on the play. He may just have some cramps. Uh, they can look at it from behind the defense. Nice blocking on the wall. That's Harris, 34, the fullback. Couldn't tell if he just cramped up or whether he had an ankle. He's so rubbing the camp of the leg. Gator, the injured player on the field. So fun, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's, that looks like a cramp. Pulling, mm -hmm. the pull his toe back and massage the calf. Right? 
Yeah, it is a cramp. Well, not a lot of uh, offensive production for the Hurricanes in the first half. The possessions, four punts and a missed field goal. Look at the number of plays. They didn't keep it for very long except for their second possession. And they always started, well, the best field position was their own 32-yard line. Collins was 5 of 10 and 46 yards. Ferguson had 39 yards rushing and uh, not a whole lot of passing. Collins started the ball game at 3 for 3, then he went 0 for 5, and then Tony he Gaber goes out the half the 2 for 2, so he winds up uh, 5 for 10. Now, this is by far the best, well, not so by far, but considerably the best starting point that Miami has had so far in this ball game. Start it with two backs. Daniel Ferguson, the tailback number one, and Derek Harris, number 34, with Ryan Collins, the quarterback. And Collins comes off quickly throwing, and it is incomplete. Paul Gidry was diving for it, but I think I heard the whistle before the ball got away. I think that ball also was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Here's James Fogeltantz, who is the referee. That ball. Apparently before the snap, ball start on the offense, be five yards, repeat first down. So it'll be first and 15. Here are your officials for the ball game. Walter Wolf, James Rennie, Michael Batlin, uh, David uh, Becker, Richard Schnell, and Buddy Horton. They are Pac-10 conference officials. Looked like uh, Collins was checking off, Keith. There were eight men up near the line of scrimmage, and you don't want to run against eight. I think he checked to a pass, and somebody moved. Handed away to Ferguson. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was a collision with a capital C. It's Brian Wilmer and Grady Stretz meeting Mr. Ferguson. Daniel Ferguson, ball carrier. Well, we talked about at the top the stories. Ryan Ferguson had, Ryan Collins had to come up with something. Only 44 yards in the first half. Okay, UCLA, stop UCLA running. The defense has to do that. They have not done that. That 89 yards in one half is very good. And for UCLA, the offensive line take the pressure off of Fiend. Got six tackles for losses as Miami. And improved defense, yes, UCLA has done very well defensively. as he steps away. I think one of the linemen stepped on his foot as he was pulling away from the snap and he falls down back at the 26 yard line and that'll be a loss of about four yards. Well, that's always embarrassing when you're an offense that hasn't scored in the first half and you're struggling. Watch the feet. It's the right center guard. or the left it's center or the right guard, right guard that steps on his foot. Actually, it was a tackle, wasn't it? Ina, Jay Ina, number 61. Uh, the tackle couldn't step that uh, far no, over. I think Ina, <laughs> Ina's in there because 61 would have stepped on it. <laughs> anyway, whatever. It's a loss good. of four yards. Third down now. He's got a big old lineman chasing him. Uh-oh, coming from the other direction. And you've got a Miami man that's got to be hurt on the play. Travis Kersky was the man in pursuit. But it looks to me like number 73 has got to be shaken up on the play. That's Perry, the big offensive yeah. uh, guard. Boy, he took a lick like, I mean, it was just like two locomotives that run together when those people slammed together. And there he is. You see that he's he's in a goodly bit of, of pain. Big people. The, the players are so big and so strong and so fast now. It's it's just incredible well, when they get a full speed collision. Well, plus, he was out in an, in an environment, in an area he is not used to. He's used to being in an offensive uh, uh, confinement of about uh, three yards to either side of the scrimmage. He was way out trying to protect, for, he was trying to protect Collins. Collins is coming back to the right of the side there. He's going to get hit right in his lower legs. He's way out there on the sideline trying to do something he doesn't normally do. You saw that that uh, cleat stuck too. Yeah, out of his element. Yep. So Ricky Perry, the big offensive guard, 6'7", 330 pounds. Well, not a good... The, the, the first possession, Keith, after the halftime is very key for both teams. Miami offensively couldn't have been worse. They went backwards on the first series. UCLA didn't do a lot, but they got the fumbled... Uh, the muff kick for the uh, touchdown. 
Ricky Perry of the Hurricanes. So the momentum is swinging over to the Bruins. Well, Ricky is walking away from it, but very gingerly. And he'll be lucky if he gets out of this with only a knee sprain because he really did take a lick. All right, he brings up fourth down, and Mike Chrissy is in the punt deep for UCLA as Paul Gidry. The kick is out of there. Gidry is going to have to back up for it. It's a good kick. Steps away from one. Now looking for a little help. He gets some help. Okay. He's gone. He's got some help. He's got two men. And Chrissy gets it. The punter finally got it. 50 yard punt. And Gidry brings it back. So the Bruins are hot now. They jump on the little fumble and get it in the end zone for a touchdown to lead 10 to nothing. And now they get a big punt return. People, people talk about offense and they, they see who you're starting on offense. And they talk about defense all the time. But it's the kicking game that has UCLA out in front. The, the muff kick for a touchdown and now the big punt return has great field position for UCLA. This was a problem for Miami last year, the special teams. 32-yard return by Gidry. So Fien is in at quarterback now as the Bruins have the ball just across the Miami 40-yard line. Special teams. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> they do color the water, don't they? And Davis has emphasized the special teams a lot in practice. Quick pop pass completed to Eric Scott. Pickup is about six, seven yards. Tomorrow night on ABC, Virginia Madsen stars in the story of real life fatal attraction, murderous affair, the Carolyn Wormus story. That's at 9, 8 central here on ABC tomorrow night. Ball is on the 34 yard line. Second down and four. Abdul Jabbar, the single back. He's back there, what, seven yards? There's contact along the front. I think a Miami man made the contact, Davis. You try to anticipate. Sometimes you're right. Once in a while, you're not. Dead ball. Offside on the defense. Actually, it's Five been yards. a very clean game. There's been very few fouls. That's an offsides like that. Been no taunting, no finger pointing, uh, no uh, dancing. Uh, Butch Davis has done what he said he was going to do, and that is clean up the program, uh, play emotionally, uh, high-spirited, but clean and fair. And this been, has been a tough, hard-hitting ball game. So put it on the 29 and make it a first down for UCLA after the five-yard penalty. Fiend fakes it. Doesn't open up anything with his fake, though, and gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that'll take care of it. As the Hurricanes recover very well, 93 is involved in the pursuit, Marvin Davis and Michael Lawson. Marvin Davis is playing one of the no defensive the tackle carry. spots. Uh, Second down and 10. It was uh, uh, vacated when Warren Sapp and Pat Riley went to the NFL, both outstanding linemen. Here's Swanee. Keith Ricky Perry, I've been told, has a sprained left knee but they're going to examine it further. One of the things that they lack here at the Rose Bowl is an x-ray facility where you could take a young man in and get the x-ray right away and find out just what degree he is injured. Since they don't have it, they'll be cautious. Check it out later on to see if it's I anything know. more. But right now, they're just calling it a I left know. knee sprain. Bruins burn a timeout as the play clock was just about gone. So, 7.43 to go in the third quarter. On ABC Sports, brought to you via the all-new Chevy Cavalier. It's all you need, and it's genuine Chevrolet. And Coors Light, shipped cold to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light, tap the Rockies. The football is at the 29-yard line, Miami side of the field, in possession of the UCLA Bruins. It is second down and ten, and the Bruins lead ten to nothing. Second down and ten. Jarvis Watson, freshman out of Downey, shows up with fullback. Give it to Abdul Jabbar. On a sweep to the right. Hurdles one, spins away, goes inside the 20, close to the first down. Very close. He has some quickness. Oh, and did you see Jonathan Ogden, the big left tackle, all 303 pounds, 6'8, number 79 there. 
pulling around and getting a good block on Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker. Auburn winning big tonight with 45 points. Tennessee scoring 27 points against Carolina. That's the biggest noise of the day, I suppose. But uh, if Vanderbilt holds on, that'll be pretty big noise, too, mm -hmm. over Alabama. But the one that surprised me was the way Michigan handled Illinois. Surprised me. Swanny, go ahead. Well, you know, I heard Bob talking about Jonathan Ogden. You don't really normally hear a lineman's name unless he's doing something bad, getting called for a bad hole. But in all of 1994, he only gave up one sack and one pressure on the quarterback. And you can imagine in the first half when he was limping around a little bit, gave UCLA quite a scare, Bob. He is huge. Just a little bit short of the first down. And so Ryan Fien on a quarterback sneak just hangs on to Mike Flanagan's hip pocket and rides him for the first down. You can put the ball at the 18-yard line of Miami with seven minutes and 23 seconds to play in the third quarter. And the Bruins are down knocking on the door again. What a great job Terry Donahue has done, uh, Keith. Uh, they ended up last year five and six, but they were ranked in the top 15 or 16 teams at the beginning of this year because people knew Terry had 18 starters coming back, had a lot of injuries last year, and I think that's the kind of respect that people around the country have for his coaching ability. Abdul Jabbar outruns the trailing pursuit, and he's got nine yards on the carry. Boy, when he plants and comes around that corner, he does it in a hurry. And again, it's Ogden with a key block. Well, what he does, Keith, he gets he sits out on the uh, far side of that uh, whoever is pulling Ogden on this instance was pulling. He averaged over 110 yards a game last year. He had seven 100 rushing yard games, and uh, he's going to lead him in. He's over 100 carry. yards right now. Yeah, he's got 108 on yards on 19 carries. Ball on the nine got it again. And Ogden, look at it, look at Ogden. Remember, to the right of your screen, the huge offensive lineman. He fouled up past me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, way to go, Jonathan. Here's the kick drill through by Merton. <laughs> You know, it's kind of fun, though, really, because these guys have been the pillars of anonymity for so long, and now with the close-ups and the technology of television and uh, the whole thing, uh, the guys who, the big uglies are getting their due, finally. Heck of a play here by the big guys in the trenches for that touchdown. All right, Greg Andersek, who's from Honolulu and getting a workout tonight, will kick off again to Tremaine Mack and Trent Jones at 6.16 to go in the third quarter. 17 to nothing, UCLA. Miami offense has been very quiet. It's a good long kick. Good corner. To Trent Jones. The corner again. Easy to cover when you kick it to the corner Trent of the field. Jones, nice the kicking. Turn. Good solid tackle at the 20-yard line by Glenn Tompkins. Monday night, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. And then Jeff Fahey stars as the marshal. Action Monday Tompkins starts on this week on ABC. Room. Check your local list. Ricky Perry is back. Return on the kickoff by Trent Jones. At offensive guard. He 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 was he was the left tackle last year, and they moved him to the right guard because he's tackle size, but he doesn't have the quickness to play out there, so they moved him into guard. Collins back, looks to throw it, gets his pass away. Jamie German comes back to it, makes the catch. Good for a first down up at the 34-yard line. Pass is and let's to check Jamie in again with John Saunders. Keith, Alabama's in a struggle with Vanderbilt. Second and eight here in the third quarter. Brian Bergdorf is picked off by Sean Stuckey. 
And then he takes off 18 yards, gets it down to the eight. It sets up a Steve Yenner field goal. And right now, Vandy has the lead, 13 to 10. Bergdorf picked off four times. Keith. Four times. Huh? Yeah. First down for the Canes, just short of the 35. And again, Collins back throwing. Throws over to this side to the fullback, Carlos Joseph. And he makes the catch on a knee, and he's down at the 39-yard line. It's a big drive, Keith, and that was a big play. I mean, either Collins has to throw the ball a little bit better to him, or Joseph has to take it and get some yardage with it. Just to catch it and to fall down, that's, that's not good enough. But this is a big drive for this offense. Second down and five. This is Ferguson. Ran through two tacklers and runs across midfield for a Miami first down. So Ferguson hits in with some authority and makes it Kane's ball at the UCLA 49 yard line. Seattle Marin is one of those in the hunt for that American League wild card mm -hmm. thing. Seattle get the playoffs. Boy, that'd be big news in Puget Sound. Good to see Junior back, huh? Yeah. yeah. On first down from the 49, UCLA Collins looking and going to the sidelines for German again, and Jamie's taken down at the 33. By Teddy Lawrence, but he turned back into the ball, and he's bigger than Lawrence, so he was able to shield the ball away from Lawrence and make the cut. Keith, the strength of this offense, the Miami offense, the last five, six, seven years, has been the wide receivers. This year they converted from a three wide receiver, one back, to the two back. The two back has been struggling today. It's a new philosophy, a new offense. Now they're getting the ball out to the wide receivers from the two back. That's where they want to get the ball. Get it outside. Four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Ferguson. About three yards. You know whose name I have not called all night? Donnie Edwards. He's made a couple of plays. Donnie Edwards, the uh, All-American candidate, the, line, the linebacker, number 23. There he is. Playing uh, in, in a pass circumstance, he becomes a down defensive end. Rushman. Second down. German. No way. That time, German was played well uh, by number 32, Sean Williams, who's a little bit bigger than Teddy Lawrence. Lawrence is 5'8 and 190. Williams is 6'1, 193. So he can shoulder up to Jamie, Jamie German a little better than Teddy Lawrence. Uh huh. Butch Davis, here's what he's following. Howard Schnellenberger won a championship in 83. Jimmy Johnson won in 87. And Erickson. One in 89 and 91. Third down. <laughs> Third down conversions, one out of seven for Miami. Third and seven. Corner. No. Just beyond the reaching fingers of Yatiel Green. That's the second time tonight he's been six inches away from a yep. big play. Yep. But sooner or later, somebody has to make a play. Either the quarterback's got to hit him or the receiver has got to make the catch. Well, he had what he wanted. He had a right. uh, six-foot, three-inch yep. wide receiver right. against a 5'8 corner. A, that was the philosophy. That's the thinking. You just have to, players have to make the plays. The coaches can't make the plays. They can call them, but they can't make them. And they're going to go for it on fourth down. The ball is at the UCLA 30, fourth and the long seven. Three wide, one back. Three wide receivers, one back. Here they come. Penalty flags all over the place. 
Saeed Tucker take off too soon? Might have been. Somebody got out there in a hurry. That's the case. It'll cost them five. Dead ball foul. Dead ball foul. Snap. Ball start on the offense. That'll bring the punting team on the field. On fourth and a long seven, Butch Davis was going for it. Now I had five yards on to it, and it really doesn't make any sense. Mike Chrissy in punt formation. Oh, so here comes uh, Mike Chrissy into the game. Obviously, he wants to hit it high, kill it deep. A pooch. That's going in the end zone. Kind of like a golf swing. A punter gets it nice and easy, and it just goes farther than you think. Keith, Keith with the Bruins coming out. Let's take a look at the drive, the last drive that took him down the field. To the left side there, that's Ogden, number 79. They're running to the right side, but they're pulling Ogden to left. Again, further down in the drive. Watch 79 and 62, Christensen. They both pull to the right. They're using those two linemen. Now, they want to take it in. Watch to the left side. They run straight left. That's Christensen and Ogden. They utilize those two linemen all the way down the field. And you notice those first two blocks, they were not just pushed out of the way, they were put on the ground. Oh. And, and, and Ray Lewis, the middle linebacker, yeah. pretty That's good ball player. Here comes up to Jabbar over the right side, and they're giving him more of the same. That's a pickup of eight yards. Ridgely comes out of the secondary to make the tackle. Oh, it's UCLA's offensive front opening the door for the running backs. That has been the big difference, yeah. the inability of the young Miami defense to contain it. Though Miami uh, defense had nothing to do with the uh, first touchdown of the ball game. That was a fumble into the end zone by a man trying to receive a punt. And really, the second uh, touchdown was set up by a, a punt return. They only had to go 40 yards for that score. That's a penalty on UCLA. Tight end moved, and let's go to John Saunders. Keith, former NFL coach Rod Dauhauer is the coach at Vanderbilt now, and he's got his team moving here. A muff punt set this up. Damian Allen, eight yards to Fred Baker. They blocked the point after attempt, but Vanderbilt has a nine-point lead right now, 19 to 10 over Alabama. Updating Colorado and Wisconsin. This one is just about done, 33 to 7. Keith. Boy, that's surprising. Yeah, congratulations. I thought they might win, uh, but wow. Rick Neuheisel off to a great start. Ball is at the 23 now. Call it second down and seven for UCLA. Here he goes, working his way in traffic out to the 25. Pick up of two on that carry. Miami. The ball carrier. With Lewis leading the way, but uh, one man, you can't be a one man. You're not going to beat a UCLA with a one man game. You're going to have to, have, other people are going to have to step up. Now, the other linebackers, early on in the ball game, we gave Coley a couple of calls. Jeffrey Taylor's been pretty quiet. Marlon Barnes has been in the ball game some as well. But uh, the rest of the linebackers have not made much noise. Yeah, when, uh, when Abdul Jabbar runs for 100, they win. Yep. Juan Russell coming up, showing blitz. Dean steps up, changes his play, and now drops the throw quickly. He wanted to go to that wide receiver screen again, and the ball was dropped by Ted Todd McBride. Well, McBride, a red shirt freshman. Holmes is uh, banged up there, Keith. Yeah, Holmes slow to get up. Now he's coming yeah. off. He led the team. Uh, but the team in sacks last year of the guys that are returning Warren Sapp had a bunch of them but they need him Chris Saylor in to punt we've got magic Benton a freshman back to receive the kick they're looking for some magic yeah but he's a freshman so the coach is holding their breath the kick is away and it's a sailor and it Goes dead at the 38-yard line. So it lands very softly off Sailor's punt. 
And Miami's got good field position. And here's Lynn Swan. Keith, Ricky Perry's back in the ball game, and they outfitted him with a protective knee brace on that left knee to give it a little more stability. Now, he did not have them on when he first came into the ball game, and it is not a mandatory piece of equipment for the players on the Miami side. You'll see a lot of guys at UCLA wearing a knee brace, and I picked one up on their sideline. It's for protection. It can save a lot of people, a lot of linemen, knee injuries if they wore them all the time, Keith. And it doesn't slow him down. He's 330 pounds. I mean, how much is a new knee brace going to slow you down, right? Give you a little protection. Trent Jones is the man in the backfield. Fake to him. Collins keeps it. Now throws it. Has a man down at the 45-yard line. That's Gerard Daphnis with his uh, second time tonight. He's seen the ball. Is complete Gerard Daphnis. And it'll be good for a first down. Time remaining, third quarter is 124. We'll play action that way. Daphnis is here and is going to come around as the quarterback gets outside. Hold. Play action. Get outside. Now, if this ball is thrown a little bit better, he could catch it, maybe run with it, but he has to go to his knees to catch it. He need to get the ball in there, stick it to him so they can get the ball and run further. First down, UCLA 45 for the Canes. Collins going big. Nope. This time it's German on the other side. He threw over here on this near side to Green. Missed him by about that much and then goes the other way deep and overthrows him just a bit. It'll be second down 10. Collins is 9 of 17 for 100 yards and uh, needs to make some plays. Somebody has got to step up. This hurricane uh, offense has always relied on a quarterback that gets the ball to the wide receivers. Collins throws a hummer. Ball is caught by number nine, Omar Roll, and Roll is ruled down after picking up about six or seven yards. It'll be third down and three. Seven yard gain on the pass play. 17 nothing UCLA leading clock running at 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Their Miami Hurricanes are one for eight on third down conversions. They run it. They don't get it. Fritz Jones. Just clogged Brent up Jones running down the middle. Area. And so it'll bring up four. These are the decisions that uh, Butch Davis did not have to make in the past when he was a defensive coordinator at Dallas or when he was assistant coach at Miami. And they, they actually went to the Orange Bowl in Miami and kind of had a dress rehearsal. Had the players on the field given different situations so they could get different uh, situations, substitutions, and also decisions that Butch would have to make. Well, Collins is over saying, no, 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 I didn't call a timeout. And uh, the official on this side of the field says, it looked to me like it was a timeout, and that's probably what they're talking wasn't, about Wasn't now. he signaling for a timeout? Well, that's what the official thought. Timeout. timeout. Miami. Miami. Timeout that's number one. Charge to Miami. <laughs> And it stops the clock with two seconds remaining. I think Collins may have called it and then decided I don't want it. Let well, the they weren't out. aware of the, the two seconds left in the quarter. I mean, you, you're just not aware of the game clock. When... Yes, yes. I think the coach was signaling to the player. It was fourth down. He wants a timeout to think about the right play. See, Butch is not aware of the clock, yeah. and, he, and he wanted, and he wanted, all right, it's fourth down and one, and that's what I'm saying. When you're not used to making those types of decisions as a head coach, sometimes you don't look at the game clock and say, well, I'll let the clock run out, and I'll have plenty of time. Well, it'll be fourth down, and uh, that's more than one. That's two yards. Yeah. And... Uh, Two seconds. Uh, this will be the last play of the third quarter. This game is not over, folks. Don't get the idea that this baby's uh, got a cap on it. It hasn't. 
All Miami probably needs from Collins is for him to well, step up and do well, something. All, Miami has too much speed, Keith, yep. and too yep. many big play people, both on offense and defense, to be out of this ball game. Well, here's your last play of the third quarter. Fourth and two. You got one on one on either outside if you throw it. There you go. Intercepted. Goodness. Teddy Lawrence got him. He went to the well one time too many. Lawrence read him exactly right, and Teddy comes away with the interception. And that was a cruncher. Just a three step hitch, three step drop in the hitch. Teddy Lawrence, he knew what was up. He knew that the quarterback knew one on one. Great play by Teddy Lawrence. We'll be back with the final quarter after this message and the word from our ABC station. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's go back and take a look. It was fourth and one. Now, this is the situation. Now, Teddy Lawrence out here, he knows that he's out there one-on-one. -on -one. He's looking at the quarterback's eyes. He knows it's fourth and one. When the quarterback sets short, he knows that it's a quick out because they're just trying to pick up the first down. Teddy Lawrence is a fifth-year senior. And he knows how to play this game. He knows he, he was out there by himself. So here's your final quarter. And the opening play is Abdul-Jabbar for a couple of yards. And that's all before he is taken down. And one more time, Ray Lewis is involved in another tackle. There's Teddy. Well, here's your third uh, quarter stats uh, after three quarters. Look it down to the turnovers. Miami's two turnovers. The one was a for a muff punt for a touchdown, and the other one was that interception that turned the momentum big time. It was the bottom points off turnovers. UCLA has the seven. Second down and eight. 149 yards rushing for UCLA through three quarters. That's big time. Whistle. No play. One of the stories of the game for UCLA is that offensive line to take some pressure off of Fiend, and the way they're doing it is by running the football. Fiend has not been a factor in this game. He has not had to do anything to help UCLA win the game except get him in the right the formation, check to the right play, and hand the ball off. Well, he's looking to the sideline for the play. The play was late last time, and they got burned on the game clock. Down second down and 13. Ryan Fee, 9 of 14, Keith, 60 yards passing. Kind of slung the ball into the middle. Nothing there. Slung? Is there such a word as slung? Slung? I see. Sling, slang, slang, sure. slung. Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to help you, partner. <laughs> Suddenly realized I've uh, run Sister, right into a thesaurus here. Sister Annette, my fifth grade, uh, my third grade uh, English teacher, is going to be calling me, I know. <laughs> Uh, out of the shotgun, Fiend looking for a little daylight, gets his pass off. The pass is incomplete intended for Kevin Jordan. Kevin Jordan's been fairly quiet tonight. The Hurricanes have had their eye on him all night. He's wearing a knee brace, too, Keith. Yep. He had surgery, off-season surgery, and uh, Terry Donahue says he's not all the way back from that yet. Three catches for 31 yards. Magic deep for so the Bruins are going to have to punt it away now with 13.40 to play in the game and UCLA leading 17 to nothing. Just when it looked like Miami was cranking it up and uh, Canes were going to be able to do something with it. They had the interception but it produces nothing except burn some more time. Chris Saylor's punt was a very good one with Magic Benton going back to the 10 yard line to pick it up. And the freshman comes back to the 18. Look who made the tackle, yeah. Look who made the tackle. Donnie Edwards, the All-American. Donnie Edwards on the stop for the Bruins. Ball is on the 19-yard line for Miami, their own side of the field. 
They're down 17 to nothing. Derek Harris and Daniel Ferguson line up behind Ryan Cullen in the backfield. And Ferguson has the ball. Up to the 22. The Miami Hurricanes are 55 and 10 on the road over the last 10 seasons of football. They have been an outstanding road team, uh, Keith. Let's look at Ryan Clement. He is the backup uh, quarterback. They, Clement was an outstanding uh, prospect that came in two years ago, and also Scott Covington. Another quarterback that the Hurricanes have. Uh, it was a battle for the starting position, and Collins won it. Has a lot of time and throws on the money. And the ball popped out, and they call it incomplete. Incomplete. Ball thrown to tight end. Number 82, Dallas. They should have caught the ball. Miami is looking for somebody to make some plays. I've said that a couple of times. UCLA is delivering some blows, and maybe that is intimidating some of these receivers. Perry is off the field now for Miami. Finally getting sore. Alabama has scored the trail by two in the fourth quarter at Mendy. Miami one out of nine on third down conversions, and UCLA is caught. Donnie Edwards was on the run, and he's pointing at somebody on the white shirt, trying to distract the official's attention, but they ball, ball. agree with him. A false start. This, the offense for Miami is not in sync. It is, it is not in rhythm. They have not gotten in, in tune here. They mentioned a new offense came with Butch Davis. He put a new terminology, a two-back offense in the spring. They practiced with it all spring and all fall. And it has not uh, been very successful here tonight. UCLA next week goes off to Rocky Mountain country. Play BYU. Folks out here on the West Coast to have a chance to see that one. Collins puts air under it. And it is incomplete. No foul. Uh, defensive man's entitled to his place on the field. And here's John Sunder. Keith, Alabama is marching back against Vanderbilt. Brian Bergdorf here, 39 yards to Todrick Malone. It sets up Dennis Riddle's one-yard touchdown run. They have just recovered a fumble on the 27-yard line and have the ball now inside the 15. We'll keep you up to date. 19-17 the score. Keith. Sounds exciting. Yes. Mike Chris is in the punt, standing back at his three. This will be his seventh punt of the night. Good one, too. Holy smokes. I guess. Ball is fielded by Gidry. And Gidry got some daylight. Now it's Lewis. If he can get away from Lewis, he's got a chance. All the way back to the 25-yard line. So Paul Gidry comes up with a big return, a 49-yard punt, probably outkicked the coverage, and suddenly almost had it come back all the way. Well, I go back to the same thing. It's the kicking game that is proving UCLA a little bit better. Ray Lewis, the starter, maybe he's wearing down a little bit. Doesn't make the play. It's the special teams that are doing Miami in and have put UCLA in great field position. Tucker fouled him out of bounds and got away with it. A 43-yard return by Paul Ball is on the 24-yard line. First down for the Bruins. Bean and Abdul Jabbar behind him. Double wide, top of the picture. Give it to Abdul Jabbar. Big hole to the 15, to the 14. And close to a first down. And here's Lynn Swan. Keith, I am with Naeem Shaw and his wife Ava, the mother and father of Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Now, I have to ask you, when he changed his name, did you two discuss that? Uh, not in advance, but we know that it's customary uh, whenever a Muslim reaffirms their faith to take on a name that reflects the attributes of Allah, the creator. So we were, uh, we knew that he was going to do that. We're going to go to the play, we'll come right back. Sure. Second and one. Same thing. Powers his way to the six. First and goal, UCLA. 20. 
Well, now, when he changed his name, you said he didn't talk to you, so were you surprised? Were you upset? No, no, not at all. Because as I just mentioned, it's customary. Whenever a Muslim reaffirms their faith, they take a Muslim name. Now, now I know he wore 33 because he's a fan of Tony Dorsett, not Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the basketball player. Was that planned ahead by his Iman, or was that just by chance? Uh, I'm sure it's by chance. He's been worn 33 since he was in Pop Warner. Okay, thank you very much. Keith? All righty, first down and goal for the Bruins. Six-yard line, give it to Abdul-Jabbar. He's got some daylight to the corner. Take whatever name you want and bring it to my office and we'll call it now. <laughs> Total offense so far in this ball game, Miami has 166 yards. Abdul Jabbar has 154. Yep. Bjorn Merton for the extra point. Kevin Walker will hold it. Chris Rubio will snap it. The big offensive line for UCLA has worn down the Miami defense. They hit him in the middle of the previous two plays. They pushed him off the line. Lewis just gets run over. He can't stop him. Earlier in the game, he was making that play short of the goal line. Mom and Dad enjoyed it. No question about it. He's had himself quite a night in this opening game, and it's, uh, I'm sure, a score that's going to be startling across the country, and particularly in the eastern part of the country. They still play football out west. And UCLA's defense is a lot better than it was last year. Andrusik will kick it off. Well, he can motor when he gets a little daylight. Kenny runs that ball back to the 33 yard line. Tomorrow, the Greater Milwaukee Open will finish. Scott Hoke is the leader after three rounds of play, and they've been doing some scoring. I'll tell you, but it was amazing to me some of the guys who missed the cut in that tournament. Some of the biggest names. Live coverage begins at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific here tomorrow. The Greater Milwaukee Open presented by Light Beer. Well, look at that. Crimson Tide have clawed their way back to the front. And there's a penalty flag thrown. It's against the Hurricanes for illegal use of hands on the run back. So the things are not going well for the Canes right now. Kind of like that thing we were talking about last Sunday, Grace. Open the lid on the rain barrel and see if the frog is green. <laughs> if it is, close it and get out of town. Because it's not a good day. <laughs> okay. 16-yard <laughs> line. Ryan Collins forced to move around. In trouble. That's a surprise right there. Yes. That game's in Chapel Hill, too. Yes, yes. Syracuse beating it's Carolina. A, the, the first game of the year, Keith, the opening game, whether it's in college or in the NFL, strange things can happen. Well, Notre Dame was beaten earlier today by uh, uh, Northwestern. If I were going to pick a dinner companion tonight, I would have picked Gary Barnett. The coach of Northwestern. The Bruins are just red hot right now. I mean, they're just swarming. Abdul McCullough all over Danielle Ferguson. The Bruins returned nine starters from a defense that, that finished near the bottom in every Pac-10 category last year. They had a lot of injuries, though, and all those guys came back healthy. 
to the 27 yard line and that's going to be a first down for Miami. Brian Collins is 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 not your prototype that you're expected to see from a University of Miami quarterback. He is not a Jim Kelly or a Bernie Kosar type or Vinny Testaverde or Craig Erickson or Steve Walsh or Gino Toretta. He's a Probably more athletic than any of them. Ferguson with that little short pass making something happen. First down Miami at the UCLA 38 yard line with nine minutes and 36 seconds to play. I hate to keep saying this but you UCLA gets all rapturous here and forgets about playing football. I will never as long as I live forget that Miami Michigan game a few years ago. Thirty five yard gain on the pass Miami line. came back yes, uh, to win thirty one thirty. Yeah. Miami. They were down. A long way. Well, they were down uh, yeah, uh, 30 to 14. Collins gets it off. Ferguson again, and uh, this time there's a little better coverage on him, but he's still got a pretty good size play out of about eight yards. Paul Gidley on the stop for the Bruins. Bob continuing to run. Miami with two timeouts remaining. Ferguson says, I'm out of breath. Send help. Timeout. UCLA. Now UCLA. Timeout. Calls timeout. Eight yard to regroup their play. defenses. UCLA. They had a 24-0 lead. Eased up for a moment, and suddenly the Canes are knocking on the door again. Football on ABC Sports brought to you by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. Windows 95 from Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? And Pagamet HB, the most prescribed medication of its kind, is now for heartburn. Trent Jones, the deep back. Ryan Collins looking to throw it. Finds a little room to work. Picks up a first down. And stops the clock as he canters out of bounds at about the 25. Well, there's big news in Nashville. Here's John with more. Keith, this game has been back and forth. Proctor had a field goal to give Alabama the lead. Then Dennis Riddle with the fumble here. Eric Vance picks it up at the 37, takes it in for the touchdown. They go for the two-point conversion. Don't get it, but just the same. Vanderbilt has the lead right now over Alabama in the fourth quarter, 25-20. Keith. Wow. Unbelievable. Rivaling the Grand Ole Opry. For when when the was the last do. time that Notre Dame, Miami, and Alabama all lost their openers in the same year? Oh, the, when the Nile started flowing north. <laughs> that pass is incomplete. Incomplete. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Canes. 24 to nothing. UCLA with the lead at 8.51 to play in the ball game. Butch Davis beginning his head coaching career at the University yeah. of Miami. And it's been a tough start for him, Keith. He's, he is straightening out the program, but. Uh... Collins forced to move again. They finally get him down as the clock rolls along and stops as he tumbles out of bounds at 8:41. And here's Lynn. Keith, that young man right there is Kishan Johnson, wide receiver from USC. He was the roommate of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and he's a good friend of Ray Lewis's from Miami, so that's why he's here watching the game. I had a chance to talk to him earlier about the possible suspension before the season. He told me that John Robinson says he is going to play in the first game, that the NCAA looking into the allegations of him accepting money uh, from someone who became an agent uh, they're trying to determine whether that relationship was pre-existing his football career, and they will come out soon with their findings. Keith? Third down and one. As your first down is Danielle Ferguson goes down to the 10-yard line. Danielle Ferguson. Ferguson's had a, a nice, productive uh, evening. Uh, his two-back offense with a fullback in front of the tailback. Uh, 
more emphasis on the running game and the tailbacks and less emphasis outside. I think there are several folks getting pretty tired now because uh, yeah, a lot of them are slow to get up off the ground. Uh -huh. Ferguson had a little rest when Jones was in there, and here's the pass to the corner. No good. Intended for Jamie German. And coverage on the play by Teddy Lawrence. Teddy Lawrence defending on the play for the Bruins. Looks to me like old Teddy's going to sleep pretty good yes, tonight. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's been busy. Yep. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you get those speed burners out there and you got to go, you got to run backwards for a ways. That tires you out in the first place. And then you got to turn around and sprint with them. It's a long night for Especially you. Especially when you're only 5'8", like Lawrence. That's right. First down for the 10. What amounts to first and goal, and that ball is intended for Derek Harris. The first time they've thrown to him all night, and he cannot Derek reel Harris, it in. The intended receiver. What, what this two-back offense, Keith, has done is, is emphasize, de-emphasize the wide receivers and emphasize more throwing to the fullbacks and the tight ends some. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm run. just saying it's the emphasis. Miami has struggled because they have they are used to the three wide receivers on back concept. And, and now they're playing the, the two-man concept, the two-back concept. Features different players in different positions. Third down and goal. Ball is resting on the 10. Throws it hard. Touchdown. Caught in the end zone by Sonny Tucker between two defenders. He had to zip it. Otherwise, he couldn't have completed it. And he did it just right. From behind the defense, nice opening. Collins can see very well, throws the ball in front of this receiver, and this Eight time the tight end holds on. And the Canes are going to go for two. At 8.02 to play in a ball game, 84 yards, it took 12 plays. Well, if they uh, convert on this and score two more touchdowns with, they only need three. Three times eight is 24 is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Drills the pass into the arms of Jamie German. And so the Canes have eight on the board with 8.02 to play. It's now a 16-point lead for UCLA. 60,091 at the Rose Bowl. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader on ABC Sports. Noon Eastern viewers in most of the country will see one of those three games there. And then at 3.30 Eastern or 12.30 Pacific, you have Notre Dame at Purdue. Notre Dame lost today. Purdue won down at Morgantown today, so that might be a pretty good one. And then at 4, West Coast only, Pacific time, UCLA has BYU. Check your local listings for the game in your area or call your local cable operator. Or the game's available on a pay-per-view next Saturday here on ABC Sports. All right, Dane Pruitt is finally going to get a chance to do something. He's going to kick off in the fourth quarter. 24 to 8, UCLA. Too early for an onside kick, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Jim McElroy and Eric Scott. I've seen close throughout the first quarter, though. And get away with it. A big touchdown for that young man right there. Ryan Collins with the new offense, new philosophy. He won the quarterback battle with the other two quarterbacks. And if they don't win the game, it's still a start for the season for the new offense. I think the Bruins smell onside kick. They got the good hands, folks, up there. But he hammers it away. It's Jim McElroy. And he got a little bit of a crack. Brought it out to about the 23-yard line where he ran into a solid tackle. So the next couple of three or four snaps are going to be pretty important to the UCLA Bruins. Miami, if they've got energy enough, will be swarming 
And it'll be very important for UCLA to pick up a couple of first downs if they can. They don't need any more points. They just need first downs to take That's time right. off the clock. Right. Oregon State beat Idaho today. Oregon uh, lost, uh, is losing to Utah at halftime, 20 to 7. But Utah's a pretty good football team. McBride arrived. They've been pretty good. Oh yes, the pack. Uh, we'll talk about the pack. I mean the WAC 10, the WAC. Yeah. Beating the pack 10 last year, uh, pretty handily. Penalty flags all over the field now. People are getting tired. There's still tension left. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start. Ball start. Concentration. You gotta you gotta buckle down now and do a little gritting and grunting uh, to make this thing last to the end of the ball game. You got 7:56 to play. Terry knows it's not over. Miami needs a quick strike. Yeah. Butch, uh, and we got a game. Butch Davis had uh, Jimmy Johnson over at the hotel talking to the team uh, yesterday. Uh, Keith, one of this old uh, coach that he used to work for with the Cowboys. This is Abdul Jabbar turning the corner and running the ball back out to about the 28 yard line. That's right, he does his thing. He comes into LA for that, doesn't he? Right. Heck, I remember Jimmy Johnson when he played. Well, you know, uh, Butch uh, Davis is another one of Frank's boys. He played for Frank Rawls at University Arkansas. of Arkansas. Uh -huh. Frank got a lot of Jimmy fellas here. Trey Lewis. Yeah, Lewis is running out of gas, and Ogden no, is the guy that's, work. yeah. You just wear down. He is so hyper and so fired up. Abdul Jabbar tries the left side and he gets a yard out of it, and that's all. What a what an outstanding player Ray Lewis is. Every great player just can't go on forever. He's trying to fire him up, but Jonathan Ogden has been just too much on that offensive line. Butch Davis, you know, kind of he spent a lot of time with Jimmy Johnson. He went from Tulsa Rogers High School to Jimmy's staff at Oklahoma State. Yes. And then he went to Miami with uh, Johnson, and he went to Dallas with Jimmy. So they've known each other a while. Well, he not only got a championship ring at Miami, but he got two at Dallas. So he's got as many uh, championship rings as Jimmy does. Pressure coming. Ball is caught nicely by Abdul Jabbar, and he's got a big play. First down for UCLA up at the 45 yard line. Whoa, is that a big play? The Canes had him hemmed in. Looked like they were going to take it to fourth down and get good field position, and all of a sudden the kid makes a one-handed grab, twisting and spinning, and picks up a first down. 15-yard gain on the pass play. Ryan Fiend, just a little swing pass, a missed tackle right there. That was Taylor, number 58. Taylor is playing in place of James Burgess, who was the second leading tackler last year as a uh, outside linebacker because Burgess was suspended by Butch Davis for the first two games of the year. So it's first down up at the 45. And timeout is called. Timeout, UCLA. UCLA spends a timeout. They will have one remaining at 5.53 to play in a ball game. You know, I never really learned my school fight song. Oh, I know it. Hell, alma mater. War is a feeling for truth. Give me some music. They lit up scoreboards from Ann Arbor to Tuscaloosa. They were warriors of Saturday afternoon. Well, the son of no oh, the victory strike off the bat. Now relive it all with Burger King Legends of College football cups. Free when you upsize your Whopper value meal for just 39 cents. Obviously, <laughs> a wiser choice than a fight song album. They're all too blue. We'll all stick together. Jimi Hendrix guitar, around 300 grand. The Vic Wavelength, around 35 cents. What did they have in common? They're both worth every penny. Hey, you get a tough case of athlete's foot, the itching, the cracking, the burning, you want a medicine that acts tough. Boom! Tough acting, tenactin. Clinically proven tenactin cures even tough cases of athlete's foot fungus. Get tough acting, tenactin. 
I want to see you dance, and I want to see you smile. From the creators of Basic Instinct. Showtime. The last time they took you to the edge. You got more natural talent when you dance than anybody I've ever seen. You're okay. a stripper, don't you get it? I'm a dancer. This time, they're taking you all the way. We take the cash, we cash the check, we show them what they want to see. Showgirls, rated NC-17. No children under 17 admitted. Starts Friday, September 22nd. Time permitting, trip to car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. The opening weekend of the college football season, not everybody played, but Grambling did, and Eddie Robinson now has 398 wins in his career. How about that? What a great record that is, huh? What a great man that is. Yes, yes. First down and 10. Here comes Abdul-Jabbar around the corner. And it hits the chalk at the 38-yard line on the Miami side of the field. And Alabama's making more noise in Nashville. Here's John. Indeed, Keith. Hold on to your hat because this one's going back and forth. Fourth and goal. Brian Bergdorf to Todrick Malone again for the touchdown. Four yards, 26-25. They went for two. They don't get it. Still four minutes to go in a one-point lead. Keith. <laughs> what a game, huh? Not a whoopies and hot dogs in that one, huh? Mm. Bruins trying to hold on to the ball and eat up the clock. 5.46 to play in the game. Going to run a little reverse here. Coming around the corner, it's Derek Ayers. And Ayers going to run it. He was a former running back there at the penalty flag as he goes down. You got a Bruin down, you got a Kane down. The hurricane gets up, the Bruin is pulled to his feet, and the Bruin is Jonathan Ogden, who is probably utterly deflated. He's been all over the field tonight. He's knocked people this way, that way, and into the next county. Led that offensive line surge that has really been the difference in the ball game. He is 6'8, 303 pounds. He's probably lost about 20 pounds here tonight. Oh, the guy hit him in the back of the head. He still got him down, though, yeah. didn't he? So he's being uh, helped off the field a bit woozy, apparently. But he certainly earned his keep today. Okay. Outstanding game for the big guy. He is an outstanding. The way he pulls and goes around the right end and then lays his body out, six foot eight, and just chops one or two defenders, the defenders down is just amazing. So he got 5.36 to play. Big John is set out. Who goes in there? We'll see who they put in replacing. It will be Andy Myers, a freshman, at tackle. Andy Myers, number 78, in at Jonathan Ogden's position. Ball is given to James Milner. And Milner, at tailback this year, having played fullback previously, bangs away and gets that ball inside the 30 and he may be very close to Marvin the first Davis down. on the stop he just depends on the mark they had to go to the 28 to get it he's got it so move the chain there's the man replacing uh, Jonathan Austin. seven yard game by Miller first down and I'll tell you what, Andy takes up a little space. <laughs> and one of these days, might be an 18-wheeler like Jonathan. Bean hands the ball to Milliner. And Milner down to the 25. Important thing here, keep the clock running. Miami has two timeouts remaining. UCLA, none. been a good drive already for UCLA uh, taking three or four minutes off this uh, off the clock with this drive as it is Miami is in uh, Kennard Lang is in the secondary and uh, right in uh, Ryan Fiend's face 
Apparently one of the Bruin linemen moved. Well, the center, but, uh, the we'll center Flanagan is taught that whenever a defensive lineman encroaches to snap the ball, and that's what he did. As soon as he thought he had one of the Miami Hurricanes in the neutral zone, he snapped it. And then the quarterback just takes it immediately and kneels down, ending the play. Miami's called the time now. They have one remaining, and it's a 24 to 8 ball game if you just joined us. UCLA led 3 0 at halftime, got a gift touchdown off of a fumble into the end zone. Little trying to field a punt. And uh, then they uh, scored again, and uh, John Saunders has more news from Nashville. Well, Keith, Alabama's defense has been doing it for years, and they're doing it once again. Damian Allen picked by Brad Ford, 45 yards, clear sailing to the end zone. Touchdown, and Alabama now in front, 33-25 with about three minutes to go. Keith. Well, the way that one's been cooking, you never know. That's only eight points. Here, the Miami Hurricanes, who seldom lose on the road. Remember, we told you a little while ago, 55 and 10 over the last 10 years in road games. Playing in the Rose Bowl for the first time. Not the first appearance in the Rose Bowl for Butch Davis, because he was here as part of the Dallas Cowboys staff when the Cowboys played in the Super Bowl. Beat Buffalo. Mm hmm he has uh, two Super Bowl rings and one national championship ring from the University of Miami. So he has three rings, but he doesn't have a boat or a bar named three rings. <laughs> <laughs> like Jimmy does. Third down and eight. Terry Donahue starting his 20th season and seemingly would have this one in hand, but not quite yet. That's not conceded. This is Milner his way down the field and picks up another first down for UCLA. Donahue needs after tonight if he wins this game and I think now you might guess that he's going to he will need three more wins to pass Don James as the Pac-10 yeah. winning his coach. Right, he's number two right now. He is uh, well they call him the Dean Remain back of back in coaches. Miami. He's been around the longest. 20 years in coaching, as you mentioned, and all 20 here at UCLA. Change for the measurement. Got an eight-yard gain by Milliner. First down, UCLA. The thing that Terry Donahue has done, he's had some some short years. There was a there was a time there when he went to eight straight bowl games, Keith, and won them, but. There's been four, four years out of the last six that he has not even been to a bowl game, but the thing that he has done, he has beaten his arch rival, Southern California, the last four years straight. And he's got to the Rose Bowl, not last year, but the year before, so. You beat USC and you get to the Rose Bowl every now and then, you're doing good. James Milliner. Inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Very close again to a first down. Well, Donahue takes up six pages in the media guide, so uh, if he stays around you much longer, they'll have to write a book. Ray Lewis, number 52, just kind of takes himself out of the play. Earlier in the game, he was plugging up that gap. He's an outstanding player, led the Hurricanes in tackles. Last year, he's a three-year starter, as I mentioned, and he has just played an outstanding game, but he's just ran out of gas. He's made 11 tackles. Burgess, however, will make a lot of difference oh, in that no uh, question. linebacking court. The other <coughs> starter at linebacker that didn't play tonight was Twan Russell. He played some, but he had a hernia operation and has played a little bit, but in a couple of weeks, he'll get them both back. I can't imagine playing football after a hernia operation. Well, he had it in, he had he had it in July. There's Twan. I didn't start. Nine yard gain on the some. Second down and one. Ball is just a little bit short of the first down. UCLA eating up the clock and if they can cash in a touchdown here that will be the door slammer. 
Abdul Jabbar has 180 yards on 29 carries and two touchdowns. Milner's in the ball game right now, and he's got it running for the corner. He's got the first down. It'll be first and goal UCLA at the Miami four. Well, this was a game that kind of settled into in uh, toward the end of the first quarter took on the aspects of being what you might call as the old fashioned five yard uh, jawbone game of football. Uh, Who's the, the tougher LA. guy? It was and then it, it turned with the special teams. UCLA scored three touchdowns on special directly from special teams. First one was in the end zone. The second one two punt returns set up uh, scores. So put it on the three yard line officially because that's the nearest forward hash mark and make it first and goal and here goes Milner. And he plows the furrow down to about the two. And a uh, clock rolling along at 235. So the UCLA Bruins who came into the ball game at 15 probably will move up a little bit in the polls. Miami will drop a little bit in the polls. The first week no does not tell the, the whole story, but does give Looking a glimmer goal, that this might be a pretty exciting football season. Schedule will play a major role in it. Oh. I can think immediately of two pretty well-ranked teams, though, that are going to bump heads pretty soon over in Boulder, Texas A&M and Colorado. Uh -huh. That'll be interesting. Uh -huh. Colorado winning big on the road at Wisconsin. Milner again looking for the end zone. Uh -huh. They're not going to let him have it. Yeah, but look at the way the running back Milliner took the linebacker and just shoved him back into the near the end zone. That's the difference right now. UCLA is 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 running over a very tired Miami defense. Colorado beat Wisconsin 43 to 7. Who wow. would have guessed it? Wow. Who would have guessed it? Carry by Milliner. Detmer will be a star, I suspect. He can Third throw ball on the Ooh. one yard line. He's got new Heisel there to. Yep. Show him the way. And the kids all like Rick. And the Bruin crowd comes up now as they're trying to stick it in the end zone and put this one away. That'll do it. Sticks it in the end zone to total 63 yards on 12 carries, and here's Merton for the extra point try. Missing a, another uh, blocker out there. It's the second time in the game they've yep. been up there without uh, enough people, so they better get them organized a little better on the bench because there might come a time somewhere down the road where that'll cost you. Sometimes that happens when the, the, the guy that's supposed to be out there is injured. And then the backup is supposed to pick up and know that he's supposed to be there. But here's the crunch on this last possession, Bob. 14 plays, 77 yards. They used almost seven minutes off the clock. So that, that tells was, you something about the football that was, game. That answered the touchdown that Miami had. Yep. More than. Oh, yeah. It just used up the clock well, and took was, the energy away. Right. There are times when you uh, you want to break a team's will, and that probably was it. The kick is good. 109 to play in the ball game. It's 31 to 8 UCLA, and here again is John. Keith, Damian Allen had a long pass to get him down to the 13-yard line, trying to go in for the touchdown on the next play, but Cedric Samuel picks it off. He actually runs it back 96 yards for what they think is a touchdown, but it's called back because of a clip just the same it gives the ball back to Alabama and right now the Crimson Tide in control late in the game 33 25 meanwhile it's now a final Colorado has knocked off Wisconsin Coy Detmer with three touchdown passes Keith all right John on the touchdown drive by the Bruins UCLA in 14 plays moved 77 yards the time of the drive six minutes and 53 seconds so the Bruins 
Done it workmanlike style and with a goodly bit of authority, I might say. It's a big win for Terry Donahue and the Bruins. Uh, well, their schedule is not. Uh, they don't. They don't play some of the uh, teams that some of these other schools play. Uh, they remember last year they played Tennessee in the opening game. They went to Nebraska. Yep. Well, starting your season with Miami is not exactly like going to the Sunday picnic. Exactly. But they've handled it pretty well, and they have to go to BYU next week, and then they'll have Oregon. BYU is right. So they're not dodging anybody. Let's take a look at the stories uh, for Miami. It didn't work out. Uh, Ryan Collins only 175 yards of total offense and one interception. And they didn't stop UCLA's rushing the defense, giving up 259 yards. For UCLA, the offensive line had to take pressure off Bean. Ogden did that. He controlled the line of scrimmage. And defensively, UCLA needed to improve. They did. No tit touchdowns allowed until the fourth quarter. This is a very impressive Bruin defense and they're going to they're going to do they're going to they're going to be there Keith I think in the in the Pac-10. Well, I think they will yeah, felt it all along and at the same time there's no reason not to think that Miami is, is going to remain the dominant team in the Big East because we saw Boston College get it pretty good last week from Ohio State West Virginia lost today at home uh, to Purdue. So there's no reason in the world not to think that Miami could march right along and, uh, and win the Big East championship. Well, there's been changes at Miami, and, and, and the major change is in the coaching staff, obviously. The major thing that they're going to do is straighten out the program, like we said earlier, with uh, eliminate the taunting and the finger pointing and all that. But along with all of that, you still have to win games. They lost a lot of defensive players, and they're changing the style of the offense. And Ryan Collins is staying in until it's over. So there's nobody being sent in to mop up. It's his game. So they, they don't lose consecutive games very often. Yeah, they lost the bowl game. In fact, they've lost three consecutive bowl games the last three years. And with last year's bowl game and this one, that's two consecutive games. Nebraska, of course, the defending national champions, in the view of most won their game big on Thursday night. Collins dumps it off. That's Trent Jones with it. And he'll pick up a Miami first down as the clock rolls along now coming up on a half a minute after they get the chains in place. Remember in college football when they pick up a first down the clock stops to move the change. Yeah, you don't need a two minute offense in college football. Nope. James, first down, stop the clock for you. First down, Miami. Derek Harris made that reception. And the pickup is short. And it effectively gets the clock moving. And Miami spins its last time out. So Ryan Collins, realizing the game is lost, 18 seconds remain, going through the routine. Taking it down to the last second, trying to find a way to get the wisdom from the sidelines to help him put it in the end zone. I, this is part of the routine. For those of you on the West Coast, next week you'll have uh, these UCLA Bruins over at BYU and Provo at 4 o'clock Pacific time. And then the following week here on ABC Sports, those of you in the West will see them against the Oregon Ducks, the defending Pac-10 champion. They do go to Pullman to play Washington State. It can be a tough trip. And they play Arizona on the 14th here. And it looks like going to Tempe might not be a whole lot of fun this year. Uh huh. The Sun Devils gave the Huskies all they wanted in Seattle today. Well, they got a good quarterback over there. Kid Plummer? Yep, he is good. Collins going to the end zone. Knocked away. Pass is incomplete. Good defensive play by Anthony Cobbs on Magic Mitten. Anthony Cobbs defending on the play for the Bruins. So Terrence Michael Donahue 
can go off to the supper table now feeling good about the day. Butch Davis on the other hand will have to do a little selling on the way back home hey, to lost, Miami. Butch lost his debut. It's the first time he's ever been a head coach. He made a mistake uh, by calling a timeout uh, when the end of the quarter was coming. But in, but in fact it did not have any uh, determination on the outcome of the ball game. Penalty flag as the clock stops at four seconds. And now they'll let it go on. I don't, they don't either. They hold it at two seconds. I think the penalty is against Miami, and so the Bruins are going to refuse that, and the referee is going to say, roll out the clock. And everybody go home. Be careful driving. <laughs> <laughs> it's procedure against Miami. So they put two seconds back on the clock. That was what he was motioning. So we hope you've enjoyed it and hope you'll join us next Saturday for a load of college football excitement. Bob Lynn and I will be in West Lafayette, uh, Indiana. Seems to me I once knew a fellow named Greasy who passed through there. The last time I went there with him, he got lost. <laughs> yeah, but he put some new roads in there. <laughs> uh, he threw it in the ground. Stopped the clock. Stopped the clock with one second. <laughs> Everybody's moaning. They lost their restaurant reservation and everything else. <laughs> well, I, I think it's, I mean, Butch and his first game, I think it's clear that he does not have the same team that was there last year or the year before. He lost, does he lose uh, yeah, but, seven uh, starters on defense and six starters on offense? And it's just not the same team. Yeah, but the point is that was fourth down. Yeah, well, I'm not talking about that play in there. Hmm. I'm talking about the overview of the uh, of the whole thing. Well, the whole thing has to do with getting your getting your every, everybody knowing where you are and, what, and who's who's doing what. Yeah, and all of that. So, so the Alabama score is final, is it now? 33-25. The Tide finally won that thing. A lot of shrapnel laying in the over that one. Rock Walker in to take the last snap of the ball game, and it's over. As UCLA beats Miami by a score of 31 to 8. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Ray Lewis, the great linebacker for Miami, and Jonathan Ogden representing that offensive line for UCLA. They were terrific. In celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and help those who need it. Don't miss the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. Dallas and the New York Giants, Monday at 9 Eastern here on ABC Sports.